you've been working hard at your job and you're driving home late. It's dark outside and your eyes are so very tired. I know, work is hard. But fear not, you have your podcast to listen to. Oh, what's that? You're all out of podcasts. Well, then on your way home, you'll probably accidentally catch a few seconds of shut-eye, drift off, and play the role of truck coon, sending some hapless person to an isekai world. Sounds fine, maybe, but they'll probably land butt-naked in some town square and be ridiculed and harassed into a life of sadness and poverty. If only you had the AAA podcast extra content to listen to, we would have entertained you all the way to the safety of your home with our hentai episodes, our after parties, and our hobby addicts episodes. After all, who doesn't like the party? And what would keep you more entertained than talk of your favorite video games, TV series, and of course, anime boobies? Don't be a truck coon. Head over to aaapodcast.com slash join, or maybe you'll go to patreon.com slash aaapodcast and support the show today. Again, that's aaapodcast.com slash join or Patreon. Get ready! You're about to listen to the Anime Addicts Anonymous podcast. Make your anime addiction worse at aaapodcast.com. And now, here are your anime addicts! Welcome into the podcast, episode 612 of the Anime Addicts Anonymous podcast, where our mission is to make your anime addiction worse. I am your host, Mitsugi, and on this rather warm January day out in Denver, I am joined by the full house. We have every suit today. We have Mason. Mason is probably, hmm, he's like, I don't know, what do you want to be? You want to be the, Mason's the hearts. Mason's the hearts. I'm the heart. How, how you doing, Mason? I I have a heart is something I do not hear very often. I'm doing all right. I actually put on this sweatshirt right before I started recording, and now it's immediately way too hot in here. Something about just the podcast energy is just heating up my bones, and this heart is pumping pure monster blood right now, so I'm ready wow. to go. We also have Caroline, who is probably, she's the clubs today, I think. How are you doing, Caroline? I'm doing well. How are you, Mason? Mitsugi, sorry. I'm doing great. Wow. Thank you for asking. Also, Jeez. when he said heart... I didn't know if we were talking like the body parts of this like thing or like like, you know this, the cl- the cards uh, yeah the cards, cards. Yeah. so I I, I I missed that memo so uh, whew, over my head anyway Caroline this is your introduction how are you doing <laughs> I'm doing well I'm sorry for the name mix up you're still drunk I'm from your concert over the that. weekend it's okay absolutely I was over here. drunk. It's fine. Oh, so she went to the club. That's why she I did not go to the club. It. I went she to went her JT Fairgrounds. She saw some baby seals and just <sighs> What are we talking about? <laughs> and uh in the third chair today, we promised we would have him back because we said we would do that. And we have Kazuo. Kazuo, how are you doing today? <laughs> Hey, what is up? I'm doing really well. It's good to be back, guys. I love seeing all your faces and seeing everybody in chat. This is uh pretty awesome. It's good to be home. I think you are Diamondo today. Diamondo. Oh. Diamondo. Yeah. I'm a diamond. And I of like course, it. the of course You're the a uh, spade. the the uh, the spade of the group. No one likes spades. I'll take the hit. It's it's uh Mitsugi in the house and you know what we're we have an unbelievable podcast episode for you guys today so you definitely don't want to miss out on this one but first you can find us live every every Sunday at 7 p.m eastern standard time on twitch.tv slash aaa podcast so come check us out there we are also on twitter and facebook as per the usual and the tiktok link has changed uh caroline what is the new link for our tiktok page well, you could just click the link as they do work like that. Um, or you can search the underscore anime underscore addicts, or I'm sure you can find it if you just type in the AA podcast too. There you go. It, I don't know. Try a different things. <laughs> we also have our Discord where we have some pretty interesting stuff going on. We have our new and improved anime club. We have a brand spanking new trivia club and more. Uh, Mason, do you want to say any words about that? 
not nah, just it's popping off it's the place to be uh please just go there and give me memes because i don't look for memes myself on the internet and the discord is where i get them so please provide them to me i will laugh heartily also we stream on at 5 p.m EST. i don't know if you said seven i don't know if that was a joke because we got started a little late today but uh 5 p.m EST. i don't know what i said i'm old Ish. i don't remember things <laughs> So thank you for that. Guys, the Anime Oscars voting is still live. If you head over to the Discord, you head to our website, aaapodcast.com. You can check social media. There are links to the Anime Oscars voting. A lot of you have voted already, but I can tell you right now, the, the best of the year is between two, and it's very close. So if uh, you know you want to be able to, you be sure to get in there and vote for your favorite because you might be the deciding vote there for our, our best anime of the year. So head over and vote for the uh, Anime Oscars. Uh, now, um, since Kazuo is back and we missed him very much cause he's a very funny and handsome guy. Um, oh, thank you. now, uh, where can people find you Kazuo if they want to check out what you've got going on in, uh, in life these days? Oh man. You know, I've just been, uh, life has been pretty wild, but, um, I am currently doing something pretty fun and not too disconnected from what we do here on the podcast. And that is I started reviewing movies and talking about movies on YouTube under mm-hmm. a different name though it's actually my my real name for those that <gasps> listen don't tell anybody. Gets. my real name is tony i know wow. it's weird i don't look like a tony but that is my name <laughs> and uh <laughs> it's a good name though. and yeah thank you and so on twitter i'm at impressive tony it's an old joke from back in the day that uh, an old friend made and i just started adding videos onto my youtube channel which is also impressive tony and right now uh i guess i'm kind of just pimping this but i am trying to get to my first 100 subscribers for some reason there are currently 84 people that have decided that it was in their best interest to follow me on youtube i don't know why (laughs) imagine that but um you know my birthday's coming up in a couple weeks and so i thought let me set a totally arbitrary goal for myself and try to get to 100 subscribers by my birthday which is february 16th so if you want to see what I've been up to and hang out and talk about just regular old movies, not necessarily anime movies, but I do also, or I will also talk about anime movies there, then uh, feel free to check it out and maybe help me reach my goal. That'd be pretty dope. Let's make that happen for, for Tony, okay? Do it, we just do it for Tony. 16 suckers. I mean, fantastic, <laughs> yes. upstanding can, citizens. Yes, if I can get 16 people to contribute <laughs> and then they get 16 people... And then those 16 people. Wow. Like, Holy what a shit. Plan. It's a, it's a YouTube you pyramid scheme. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it's a uh, impressive. Tony is the YouTube channel. So check it out. All right, guys. Well, today on the podcast, we have a packed episode for you. We are doing our smexiest men of anime tournament. It is, it is uh, long in the making. There are more people that will be involved in this uh, segment than are actually on camera right now. So there will be more people joining us here uh, before too long. So get strapped in for that. There will actually be six of us when we're all done. And of course, we also have our second round of impressions from winter 2022. I am finishing all of mine because I will not be here next week. Uh, we are doing Futsal Boys, the strongest sage of the weakest crest, Tokyo 24th Ward, uh, Police in a Pod, the genius br- prince's guide to raising a nation out of debt. She professed herself Pupil of the Wise Man. Some of these titles are so fucking weird. <laughs> Good lord. Uh, Sab- they're not even trying anymore. Like honestly, they're just like let's just describe the show in one sentence. Uh, Sa- Sabikui Bisco and In the Land of Leeddale. All of these. We got eight impressions for you. So, without further ado, I'm not even going to ask. We're running along already. Let's get to it. <laughs> It's time for big news of the week. All right, I'll be quick here, guys. The big news for me is that Parrot Analytics has done some work on anime for 2021, and it was determined that Attack on Titan was the world's most, quote, in-demand show of 2021. It's probably not that shocking. The global TV demand data was gathered for the entirety of 2021 and determines the demand based on the, quote, signals on the web, such as Facebook likes, Google search data, etc., and as I said, Attack on Titan was the most in-demand series of 2021. Dragon Ball Z was the most was named the most in-demand, quote, legacy series. I'm not sure how they define that, but it's probably not all that shocking. And the glo- and but the good news here, and this is great, great stuff. The global demand for anime grew by 118 percent. So you know that's pretty outstanding. And the and the genre's global demand share increased from 4.2 percent to 7.1 percent. 
So that means that amongst all forms of media, anime was the third most in demand globally, only behind crime dramas and sitcoms. So 7% of all demanded media is now anime globally, which is insane. Wow. It's growing very fast, and I don't know why it couldn't have happened 20 years ago before I, you know, had to hide like a, like a leper from my high school classmates. But um, <laughs> <laughs> honestly, we get the shit kicked out of you for sure back then. But uh, anime is booming, and, you know, fuck, if this happens again next year, there won't be a single person anywhere in the United States that doesn't know what the fuck anime is. Everybody will know. So we did it. We did it finally. Let me, we were let me like, ask you this, Mitsugi. What do you think about Dragon Ball Z being named the quote most in demand legacy series? What I mean, first off, what does in demand even mean? But do you honestly think that Dragon Ball Z is maybe the most recognized, the most viewed? Like, is that? I mean, I would kind of guess One Piece, right? I, I'm not really sure. Globally? I'm not sure how they defined it, but um, let me see if there's actually like a definition here. I'm not sure how exactly they defined legacy, but to me, it probably is like shows that aren't running or have been mm-hmm. not running for a while. So oh, my assumption fair. is that One Piece probably isn't even in that group. Um, True. But I don't know. Dragon Ball is probably the most demanded anime that's ever been made since since it started. You know, you're talking about yeah. this. You know, second most in manga sales. It's definitely got the most video games and movies, etc. Yeah, uh, I don't true. think a single human doesn't know who Goku is. So who's Goku? Oh, shut up! Everybody knows Goku. <laughs> He's my dad. So uh, pretty cool stuff. It, the point is that anime is big, and it's cool to be a part of that. You know, and I hope it keeps getting bigger, so I can continue to wonder why it came so late for me in my life. All right, and that's all I have. And uh, Caroline, what do you what do you want to talk about? Well, Crunchyroll has announced that Jujutsu Kaisen Zero, the film, will be opening in the U.S. and Canada on March 18th. So, hooray for us! They'll have both the subtitled version and the dub version, and it'll be launched in over 1,500 theaters as well as in IMAX films, and they will start to go on sale on February 25th. So, let's get excited for it. Um, now, if you live outside of wow. the U.S. and Canada, the movie will also be quote-unquote coming soon to theaters in the U.K., Ireland, Australia, New Zealand... France, Germany, Belgium, Luxembourg, Austria, Switzerland, Sweden, Jeez. Finland, Luxembourg. Netherlands, uh, French-speaking Africa, and Latin America. So do the Animaniacs places. song. <laughs> the Come Animaniacs on, you can do it. Song. Caroline's <laughs> wacko as she points with the yeah. little like pointer or whatever. I don't know. Once again, makes... oh no, I Caroline know doesn't know. Caroline's so young. So this is how it works. Doesn't Every know. single episode, we have to make one reference for Caroline's just like yeah. N- what does that mean? This one, boys. <laughs> That's all right. Man. Well, if you are unaware of uh, what Jujutsu Kaisen Zero is going to be about, it is actually going to be a prequel to Jujutsu Kaisen, and is about a nervous high school student who is suffering from a serious problem. His childhood friend has turned into a curse and won't leave him alone. Now his friend is no ordinary curse. His plight is noticed by Satoru Gojo, a teacher at Jujutsu High, a school where fledgling exorcists learn how to combat curses. Gojo convinces him to enroll, but can he learn enough in time to confront the curse that haunts him? Got to find out in the movie. So, Mason, what do you got? Oh, I just got some tourism news. You know, while we're all trapped inside, we can longingly think about going to Japan. And here's two things to whet your appetite. Number one, Ghibli Park has announced that it will be opening on November 1st, which is yay. Kind of cool. It's not too far off. They will be opening the Ghibli Warehouse, Hill of Youth, and Dondoko Forest uh, this November Followed next year, in the later half of 2023, by the Mononoke Village and Witch Valley, which is inspired by Kiki's Delivery Service. So, I know, you know, Kazuo, myself, and Mitz have gone to the Ghibli Museum, and uh, I'm kind of interested in checking this place out, too. Seems kind of nice and lovely. The other news is that the life-size Gundam that is located in Yokohama, the 60-foot-tall moving RX-78-2, will remain open for another year past when it was originally planned to be taken down, which means it will stay open until March 31st, 2023. So if you missed out on seeing it, they're like, hey, we're going to keep it open just so, uh, you know, hopefully it'll open back up and we can get to go say hi to it. Uh, Of course, if you don't know, there's two additional Gundam on display that are life-size. The RX-0 Unicorn in Diver City, which replaced the previously static one, 
and the Freedom Gundam in Shanghai, as well as a fourth statue, which will be coming out shortly in April in Fukuoka. So if you like Gundam and just want to make a worldwide tour to see all four of them, uh, you can do that uh, eventually when we're all uh, out of our houses. So those are two news-related things for you guys who like to travel. Lovely. I'm excited to finally get out of my house. Aren't we all? All right. Well, now that we're done with the big news, we have our main topic for today. And I have I have uh, acquired two ladies from the the downstairs area because when we're just on the mud side, like we need two two females. Any <laughs> ladies? Female. Any ladies <laughs> out here? <laughs> here Coming to this random here. bald guy's house. <laughs> When and we're that voting, is how you get girls. Well, you just step outside, <laughs> no, you yell. That's into what. The distance. That's what Mitsuki Don't did. Don't worry, I'm an anime fan. <laughs> I, I just shouted. I was like, "Who's hotter, Vegeta, or or maybe it's Gojo from Jujutsu Kaisen?" And like, women just start flooding in because now that anime is so big. Um, you know what? I'm not even gonna put myself on camera. No one gives a fuck about me. <laughs> hey, I do. He's learning. He's it's learning. just full on. Oh, I mean, it can't really fit all three of us on here anyway. So. Honestly, so we need three ladies to do a vote on which boy anime boy is the smexiest. I mean, that's common knowledge, right? It should be obvious. So we have Caroline, of course, is uh, is is judge Hi. number one. I'm the resident female. That's right. <laughs> and An we also have Pancake. Who we all we all know. I'm Pancake. licensed. You're the licensed resident female. I'm I'm a licensed female. I think we're all licensed female, but I'm also resident. <laughs> We, I was about to say, like, are we gonna have like a cat peeing contest, like, over who's the resident female? Because I will out out piss you a hundred percent. I'm, you know what? I will give that to you. I did by default. I'm just kidding. <laughs> yes, we have Pancake, the resident shit talker. I will be surprised if it's above a two. Yeah, she just comes comes unfiltered and hard with all the with all the trash talk. And we also have we've, we've got our shit and piss covered. What's what's next? Who do we have here? <laughs> Just you wait. Hailing, hailing from the Santa Cruz. Yes. Yeah. What's my name? Oh. Hi, I'm Meg. <laughs> <laughs> this is just Meg. Yeah, I'm just Meg. Whatever. So we we have a, a dear friend of Pancakes with us today. So um, looking forward to getting this going. So 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 here's here's how we did this. This was my brainchild, and unfortunately, you had to deal with that. Um, but the three men, Cosmo, uh, myself, and Mason, all came up with the nominees for the smexiest men of anime. So, you know, ladies, it, it, you may not really get the smexiest man on this list, but I don't give a fuck. You're just going to have to deal with it. And um, Wait, there, you didn't let Mitsugi pick all of these because he no, 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 definitely no. probably stacked that shit. No, it's an even split. Come on. Okay, well, I hope now, you didn't what? fucking cheat. Jeez. Now, one thing I kind of want you, the guys to do is to write down who things, who will be at the at the end, who will yeah. be crowned the winner Ooh. of the sexiest man. Who so whoever is, is correct, man? you get an honorary point for being correct. I feel like we should have thrown Mitsugi into oh, this wow. competition. Oh, yeah, <laughs> he, he goes both ways, so you never know. Mm. <laughs> I'm girly So enough. all the guys, write down one anime character on this uh, on this. Uh, voting board here that, that you think is going to be at the top oh okay well, i can do so that I'll, I'll say this right now you know there were some people i wanted to select but maybe the other judges picked someone for example you know i wanted to put kelsifer from howl's moon castle <laughs> objectively the, the, hottest, the hottest men out there <laughs> he is hot he's not a but man. uh you know i was kind of he don't, has no don't take that from him don't take that from listen him. Form. he's got no he's got no downstairs to mix up he he's not is a man on a pile of i wood. will no he's got I've, it he's space. not a man he has no downstairs to mix up so you go We're sit in the man. corner <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'm, I'm putting down my selection. I'll write it All down right, right See, now. I feel like I'm at a disadvantage because I know the ladies of the podcast less than anybody else here. So <laughs> I don't know your tastes. I don't know what No enemies. excuses play like a champion. Listen. All right, yeah, I don't right. want to hear any excuses later, okay? Now, All right. I'm just trying to get an idea from my fellow ladies here. Are we going just based on smexiness? Or are we just, are we also going to take in personalities to account? No, I'm no. going no? all in oh. on Big Daddy fucking energy. 
That's but all I want. There's nothing sexier God. than a very cool guy. Big Daddy. No, has a nothing sexier. No, nothing sexier than a, a a man that's like I got big dick daddy energy. All right. <laughs> you, you know, that's just not. That's just not my type. Well, then I'm you know? banking on pancake. Uh, well, that's why there's three of you running the show. So I've made okay. my pick. Okay, I have to re- <laughs> I, I need to regain control of the podcast. So, <laughs> <I'm sorry. laughs> so um, so. For those of you listening at home, uh, you will have no visual. I apologize. But the people on Twitch do get to look at the bracket, uh, which you've already inspected. And I will be flipping back and forth between the bracket and, uh, you know, all of our cameras. And uh, as for Caroline, you're going to have to Google these guys yourself, although I assume you know who they are already. So, for the most part, yeah. But I do have a visual reference because I was demanded, it was demanded by Pancake that she would fuck my day up if I didn't have visuals. Is that right? Absolutely. I would have also fucked your day Straight to jail. No sex for three weeks. Wow. (laughs) (laughs) I'm suddenly very motivated. Okay, so getting getting on with it here. We have 16 entries in the bracket. I'm not going to announce them all up front. You're going to have to take them as they come. And um, I might call for a vote on some of these at any given time because if we talk about each matchup forever, it will take literally forever to get through it. And we have about 40 minutes to do this. The first matchup, the number, and they are seeded. Number one seed in the bracket is Levi Ackerman from Attack on Titan. All right, um, we're done. It's over. Yeah. He won. And <laughs> and I mean, that's hard to beat. And the twins from Oran High School Host Club. So yeah, uh, Levi wins. Levi, Levi, Levi wins. not even a question. Wow, well, the twins no, are, they're big. They're cute, pussies. but they're not. But Let's if, get but, some but, visuals. Like, Levi has an energy to him that like the twins don't have. Yeah, like he, you're like, gonna come home. Levi's gonna have the house clean, and then he's gonna walk no, around. No, that's gonna be the twins. They're gonna take care of you the way that they take care of uh, whatever her name is. What the fuck is Harvey? Her name? Yeah, Harvey. Harvey. Um, yeah, yes. no, I don't want that. I don't want to get. I don't want to get gang banged. I just want big dick Whoa. daddy energy. Yeah, the two of them together is a little weird. Yeah, the two of them together is weird. Too many penises in this scenario. We're going with Levi. Levi. I can manage this. And I have a feeling that they're going to be more entranced by each other than a woman. Yeah, exactly. Like, if we're all... I know that's their character trope is that they are, quote unquote, in love with each other. Yeah, we're all in the bedroom together and they're paying more attention to each other than I can never compete with them. No. Yeah, exactly. Okay. I have managed to... I have managed to get this... We have never done any, I, I've never done anything so complicated in my life with with uh, Twitch before. So okay, so um, so Levi wins. I'm bear with me here as I figure this shit out. Uh, so we will we will push Levi through to the next round. I'm glad glad that we could be very quick about it. Uh, second matchup in the tournament, so to speak, is going to be as I bring back the visual. Is going and I delete the twins because they're gone. Is Onizuka from GTO and Gojo. Oh my oh, god, it's that's Gojo! No, it's so hard. <laughs> Gojo no, Satoru. Gojo all the way. No. He is a mysterious man, and I love him dearly. Yeah, but I don't want him to be blindfolded. I want to be blindfolded. What if he gives you his blindfold? blindfold. From Jujutsu oh. Kaisen, Gojo. Hey. Oh, yeah. oh my <laughs> smooth. Okay, he's persuaded me. Yeah. I love me some Onizuka, but no, he looks like he looks like he's gonna be on the Missouri football team. And I want nothing what does that to mean? do with that. <laughs> what he is- looks like white trash. White trash. <laughs> oh my goodness! Well, he's I a love Yankee, it. but <laughs> okay. So that was a. So um, did did you all vote for Gojo? We had to. Yeah. yeah. Okay, Gojo. Gojo easily. He's gonna blindfold me. He wins. Oh, yeah. okay. Well, that's interesting and unexpected logic. Uh, <laughs> Gojo was the was the nine C for no apparent reason. So he's technically the underdog, but I guess it doesn't really matter. All right. <clears throat> Now for your third matchup, and this is going quite well. And you know what? Well, you know, Mitsuki, I don't know what seed means. So um, <laughs> you saying that over and over again does nothing for me. So see, the lower number is the favorite to win. So the one seed almost always beats the 16 seed in sports. Now, who determines who's the favorite? Yeah, like, who's, yeah. how just, do you determine that? I just looked at the right names. The number and I, generator. <laughs> listen, I, no, look, I looked at the names and I said, like, it's pretty obvious Levi's a higher seed than the twins, right? So but I, I just used, is too, like, he should be way higher than that. Yeah, yeah that's what I'm saying. saying. Like, I This is the Mitsugi curve. That you, you don't, <laughs> listen, you say that now, but you don't know who the other high seeded characters are. So we're going to see one right... All right, then. Fucking move on. Oh, my God. She's yeah, so aggressive. <laughs> All right. We're going to see one right now. The, the, the next matchup is Roy Mustang. 
Oh, fuck. He's hot. See? Roy In Mustang more way than one. was a high seed. He's yeah. the five seed. And the 12 seed is Kyo from Fruits Basket. Are you fucking kidding me right now? So are here's, you, are here's you fucking Kyo. my dick no, right now? Kyo. And here is. Uh, um, no. I'm, I was Roy never Mustang. a big Kyo person. Are you shitting I was my dick? I was, I was a Yuki fan. Are you shitting my dick? I don't know. He's too, he's too soon no. very for me. Unbelievable vulgarity. Fantastic. I feel like my contributions are getting voted off very quickly. <laughs> That's okay. I picked Onizuka, so you know, I I, th- I thought Onizuka is like abs with the with the mallet. Okay. You know, he comes. I'll be honest with you, Mitsuki. I, need, I don't. I I, I cannot something. tell you what Onizuka okay. looks like. <laughs> Pancake I'm, is speaking now. I she need, wishes you just to I listen. I need a sec. I see need a sexy picture of each, and then I will decide. Oh on my this. god. Okay. Sexy picture of each has been requested. I think we can do this, but you might end up with. Mm, Watch out. Mm, mm. I better take the image down. Just in yes. case, we might. I'm just see... gonna modify the search. Didn't prep sexy images. He's just on Google <laughs> looking up <laughs> Roy Mustang. Oh, that's, oh that's... I'll tell you what. I was no looking way. through Roy Mustang pictures earlier. It they, they are kind of hard to find ones that are actually like ooh Roy Mustang. They're, he looks kind of he looks kind of yeah. wonky and. <laughs> What about the one where he's like, uh, his his like side is all messed up, and he like singes it in order to like. Mm. Uh, okay. Okay. According, okay. To, according to Google, this is sexy Roy Mustang. Oh my god. Looks very angry. Yeah, he yeah. looks he looks steamy. And this he is wins. sexy Kyo. No, I'm still Team Kyo. Um, you know what? Up against Roy Mustang, I think Kyo wins. I'm Kyo. I'm Team uh, Kyo. Uh, oh Look my god. Him. He's got the orange <laughs> hair. He's got the orange eyes. Like yeah, here, Mulder. I would get lost a- in those eyes, homie. Yeah, but look at Roy's Roy. a little much, I think. He's I don't such out. a man. <laughs> but I'm not like into the must like I don't fucking give a shit about muscles. Okay. All right. I think it's over. I think I that lost. Kyo has upset Roy Mustang. Fuck me. See, as I butthole. said, so yeah, so see, so so Kyo was the five seed, Roy Mustang was the twelve. But sometimes upsets do happen. That's the name of the game. All right. Now, I don't think now, you paid any attention to the seat order anyway. <laughs> oh, the seat order is very important. Okay. Don't don't play fucking games. See, people in the chat fucking agree with me. Thank you. Okay. Uh, the next matchup, and I appreciate all the energy. It's very nice. The The next matchup is between Sebastian from Black Butler. Bye. I've never oh. seen Black Butler. And but how? I know who you're talking how? about. How? How's moving? Ca- how? Oh, okay. All right. That, was that wow. a sweep it? Are we sweeping it? I mean, yeah, Sebastian, yeah, we're sweeping. Uh, but Hal. Hal. Uh, it's, just, yeah. it's swept. We I mean, need... I could never be with Hal because he's a big baby bitch, but he's yeah, pretty Yeah, I have to agree. He is too See? much of a pretty boy for me, but, you know, he's okay. So you were like, he's oh, my than God. Than Sebastian, I think. We're never going to find anybody hotter than Gojo. Well, how? here's Hal stepping right I, up. I never said that. I didn't say he was hotter, but he's the four seed, and he has easily supplanted yeah, the 12 seed. you put the, him up the against the, the one dude from Black butler like who gives a fuck well that's why he's the 13 seed yeah okay so they're, they're, they're underdogs and they're it doesn't favorites. even matter the ladies they don't understand how tournament brackets work okay <laughs> so you have to go with the numbers they, what do the numbers mean <laughs> all right so we're halfway through the first round and you will have the very painful matchups of levi versus gojo and kyo versus how in the second round now, now no spoilers no spoilers i wasn't gonna say shit oh move on okay oh my god <laughs> all right pancake is getting aggressive She's all like fired up in her pants because she's looking at all these hot anime boys making her all crazy. Yeah, I know. The testosterone level's rising from like 7 to 12 or whatever girls have. <laughs> all right. The next matchup is between Kakashi from, mm. well, Naruto. Mm. Goes without mm. saying. There, there, There's your smexy yes. picture. Yes. Yes. Mm. yes. And Guts from Berserk. <laughs> Fuck me. Oh, oh why my you, God. Why did you? Guts is too muscly. Listen, he's why'd too, you? He's you too guys, giant. You we like pancakes. Uh, we like pancakes. <laughs> you literally put the two one-eyed beauties in my eyes up against each other. I didn't actually pick either of these characters for the tournament, so don't blame me. This is unfair. Who the also fuck? is that? What you call it? The one-eyed beauty? Yeah, they're the, my one-eyed beauties. <laughs> <laughs> Kazuo makes his grand return. He's like, damn it, I'm upstate. I gotta go back to my roots. Oh my god. (laughs) Yes, they do have a one-eyed beauty. Um, Well, I'm putting my vote in for Kakashi. Here's Kakashi again. I'm also Kakashi. Okay. Well, I just want to hear what Pancake says. Not that it matters at that point, because... But, listen. You You don't get to be... We're not worth two votes. I know, but listen. Guts is this muscly 
dripping beauty with one eye that just loves Casca. All right, that's fucking hot, right? <laughs> and then there's Kakashi, who's just a fucking pervert, but he's also really hot. He also killed his girlfriend. So listen, spoilers. Listen, <laughs> oh. that's a spoiler. been out for a decade. That act, that part actually hasn't been out for a decade. Thank you, um, but uh, he had to. I hate it was to say it doesn't. Yeah, yeah. Blah, 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 blah. It doesn't really matter. Fuck you. So Kakashi moves well, ahead. What we have right. learned is that Caroline and Meg are not team big muscly boys. Mm. It's just so not my type. It's not my I'm, type I'm changing either. my prediction. <laughs> or... You cannot do that. I was an emo kid growing up, so I got to have a say for like the pretty boy, and sly, mysterious. Listen, and I was an emo kid? Yeah, but now you're like, you like the muscle, weight, li- like I never got into that. You want a man. I do want a man. I don't and I want found a, a man bald one. because I am already the like, you, <laughs> you know, are the, the force man? of nature. I am the man. I don't need a man. I want a pretty boy. No, I want somebody <laughs> that can put me through a wall. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I feel like we have opened a door here. <laughs> A okay. door we did not expect to open. We had opened a wall. We just we ran through it, and now we're all along for the ride. Yeah. So I'm game. Kool-Aid I'm buckled man up. The wall. All right. And the next matchup is, and this, this is very fun. Um, the I next matchup is Gilgamesh from Fate. Bye. Uh, I don't know. We'll see. He's got some. He's got some pretty good pictures. Um, and he a from Yu Yu Hakusho. Show. Hie. <clears throat> this matchup, I actually have no idea we're going with what EA. any of these characters look like. It's okay. <laughs> Caroline, we're just going with EA. Caroline votes EA. But, but, I, I, but you're not going to like put, me. I put good, I, <laughs> listen, I put good pictures up for you guys. Wait, I saw her. So, Meg, who, who would you pick? Here's Gilgamesh. Here, here's Gilgamesh, and here's EA. The two good photos. He looks like a little kid, and I'm not into that. Yeah, he looks too like too much like a kid. Yeah. Wait, wait. We rewind 10 minutes where you guys are all Kyo over Rory Mustang. Well, now, Kyo is, like, he's got he's a point not, there. He doesn't look like a twelve-year-old. Yeah, <laughs> I think he's got to go down there. Look, if, pull me up a sexy picture of Hiei. They don't understand his raw energy. Okay. Did you guys even dark tournament? All right. All right, no. we're, all right we're pulling from a sexy. <laughs> we're at, but there is a call for a hex for a sexy Hiei picture, which requires me to take the images down off Twitch temporarily. <laughs> for you may so, I mean, I don't know if I can find the the. He looks like a little kid. He uh, looks twelve. I mean, I don't really know. I typed in sexy. Uh, <laughs> not a lot came up. Yeah, look at him. He, You were just talking about how you want a, a mysterious guy. You can't get much more fucking mysterious than he, eh? He won't even fucking tell his sister that he's his... his, his, his that he has, she has a brother that's still alive. Like, there's a whole thing. He's very mysterious. But, like, also, come to me in, like, 10 years when he doesn't look 12 anymore. Uh, well, he's been around for a long time. He's probably, like, 50. Then right. sorry, bye bye. Yo, I gotta go. No right. I think <laughs> I think we decided better. the protesting of uh, pancake means nothing. <laughs> so. I also feel like you can't have Hiei and Vegeta in the same bracket. Like, yeah, how do I pick? the same character. How do I? Then pick? again, we did have Gojo and Kakashi. Yeah, so. I know. And then you yeah. had guts and freaking yeah. All right, so the, so Gilgamesh has upset Hiei. All yes. right. Yes. The next. Also, Cammy in the chat is all about Kurama. So. Ah, Karama. Well, See, you know, Karama, Karama, I'd pick over Hiei. Yeah, I would too. He's like, mm, I'm Karama. Look at my hair. I'm so sexy. I don't do a whole lot. I'm a fox boy. Mm. You want to see Karama? Yeah. Sure. <laughs> yeah, can we swap out like. Hiei and Karama and run that back? Uh, Kazuo, stop fucking trying to cheat. I will break your kneecaps. Wow. Ah, Here's I have Karama. No to... We probably need like white-haired Karama, right? Uh, all Karamas. There's no, like Karamas, good boy. Any, anyway, any way you slice it, Fox version, redhead, it's all good. Any chance for a swap out? Anybody feeling compelled? Uh, yes. Well, you already wanted Hie, so. <laughs> Give me anybody from Yu Yu Hakusho. All right, we got to move on. I think it's, I think it's a done <laughs> deal. All right, the next tournament matchup is Sashomaru. Oh fuck me. Uh, nice. Everyone's favorite. Fuzzy boy, I guess. Yeah, like what is he? And I an <laughs> and Makoto from Free. Okay, uh, I know. Shishomaru. <laughs> Shishomaru. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> we cannot go with him. Oh wow, <laughs> Caroline does not agree. He's t- 
too soft. The two ladies. I don't want to fuck with that. The two ladies to my left are like bestiality. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> you furry <laughs> cock. I'll make dog noises. Just do it. <laughs> Put it in. I'll make dog noises. Put it in. Woof, woof. <laughs> what that oh, tail do? Oh, it's Makoto. Well, Makoto just got just got. He just eliminated. got his head cut off. Yeah. Well, at least he doesn't have the shark teeth. I like the shark All tooth right. boy. All right. He's my favorite. And the last matchup, and we'll probably sweep this one in 14 seconds, is Victor from Yuri on Ice. He's gay. He is, I believe. <laughs> I, believe I haven't seen. He can still be sexy. He uh, can still be very sexy. I'm not saying he's not. Se- Vegeta. And Vegeta. Vegeta. Oh, Vegeta it's from Victor. Dragon Ball Z. I know he's gay, but Victor. We, oh, we're having this. De- we're having. Go back a, to Victor. We're having a decision but he's here. He's gay. He's not even into you. <laughs> I know. You know what this he, is about. We just this is not his... about you. I just, okay. I just, well, <laughs> so what? <laughs> this is about <laughs> who's sexiest. This isn't about you. Definitely, who would be into me. There's definitely <laughs> more, more deliberation. In that case, he <laughs> wasn't involved on this poll at all, but here he is. There's, there's, it's definitely Kazuo Victor with the rationality. <laughs> Victor just toppled Vegeta. I love Vegeta. Is that what I heard just now? I vote Victor, so yes. I voted Vegeta. Caroline, who did you vote for? It's Victor. Wow. Why do we have all these lame ass pretty boys in this bracket now? Thanks, <laughs> because ladies. Because two out of three people love like lame ass pretty boys, boys wow. and you're the only one who likes muscle boys. See, this is the problem with me I don't pretty th- much only liking old anime is all of the men now just look too wimpy for me. Mm. Every single one. Okay, but like even if they like are Vegeta, wimpy, the hairline is just. Ooh. He's got a powerful hairline. Okay, that widow's peak <laughs> is like he. Like, listen, I'm gonna make Vegeta peak. All right. Oh my oh god. god. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> this should have been the him tie episode. <laughs> yeah, I all right. That earlier. <laughs> okay. Well. Wow. All right. Well, we're in the second round now of the tournament. Um, as I put our cameras back on, the second round consists of Levi versus Gojo, oh Kyo versus Hao, Kakashi versus Gilgamesh, and Sashomaru versus Victor. So, and this is very your bets now. Yeah. So, very, uh, some very big upsets there in the first round. And back to you, Cotton. All right. So, now I will bring up the images one more time. The next round is Levi, again from Attack on Titan. Versus Gojo from Jujutsu Levi. Kaisen. Gojo. Gojo. Levi. Gojo. We got a tiebreaker. Oh my gosh! So, so Caroline is gonna. So Caroline holds the fate of these two of these two gentlemen okay, so in her hands. Levi yes. is a badass, but yes. What Goju. is he? And he cleans. Other but than Gojo that. is what sexy. Is Gojo. Go- Sorry. <laughs> Fuck off. <laughs> um. You know what? I have more of an affinity for Levi, but in terms of smexiness, I kind of it has to be Gojo. <laughs> what? Those baby blues. Oh, you can't the fight them. You blues. don't even fucking see them. He's walking around. But like that's a- like the best part because <laughs> like, only the- you get to see them. No, he only pulls out his eyes when he's about to fucking kill something. Oh, what if he's about what to well, fucking kill out. me? Fucking kill that <laughs> pussy. <laughs> <laughs> You killed that pussy. You heard yeah, it here. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you heard it here first. All right. So, so did we just pick like Gojo? Yep. I killed yeah. the pussy. I believe they picked Gojo. He... All right. Back to you, Cotton. Gojo killed the pussy. All right. And we are <laughs> cat. Uh, and boom goes the dynamite. And boom goes the... Oh, I have that drop somewhere. <laughs> um, okay. So next round, uh, round two, second match. Getting into the, some of the good stuff here. Or I have to delete poor Levi unexpectedly. Ugh. That was my pick, so by the way, for the winner. So many people listening to the podcast are going to be so pissed. That <laughs> I love Levi. I picked Levi. I'm sorry. I mean, I love Levi, but if it comes to, like, Levi versus Goju. Gojo. You don't even know his name. My personal... I'm sorry. You're going to be in bed with him. He's going to be like, who's, who's Goju? I won't, I won't need to call him by his name. We're just going to call him daddy, probably. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay. So um, the next matchup is... I think we're going to sweep this probably in three seconds. Hey, Caroline, I just want to yeah. let you know that we fully planned on this being the hentai episode, but we needed a third person. So that's why we're doing it on the main topic, because we Great. knew we couldn't pull you into the hentai episode. 
Sorry, not fucking sorry. <laughs> if we were doing this, maybe I would have gone on to the, the hentai episode. Like, if this is what we're talking about, this is a little bit more tame than actually just talking about. Well, we dick. could do we could do a big dick bracket on the hentai episode with the same characters. Oh, a big <laughs> dick bracket. Well, well, we weren't planning on doing a hentai episode today, but cuts, 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 we could just okay. look, we could just find in the future. In the that future, in order to make this. In order to go full circle with this topic, in the future we need to do, like, sexiest anime girls for the guys. Oh wow! Yeah, that, that, yeah. That hits I like this. Though. Does it? it? It does. It's yeah, because every anime, dudes every anime computer girl computer looks talking the same. about hot chicks is different. That's true. I don't, I don't I know. I mean, we talk about girl boobs all the time on this show. Eighty-five percent so of this podcast audience is male, listen, so they probably like it more. Listen, I was picking out my wedding dress yesterday, and they. I had Meg and another one of my friends, and all they were talking about was how good my tits and my ass looked. So it's just normal. Yeah. 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 At this point, I mean, you want your tits and ass to look good. Okay. All right. Well, let's move on. Put that, put that on my gravestone. <laughs> yeah, for sure. All she right. She had great tits. <laughs> <laughs> the next matchup, by getting back to the tournament here, the next matchup is Kyo from Fruits Basket. Uh, uh, Pancake's still mad that he's even in here. Versus, I think we're going to sweep this. Hal from Hal's Moving Castle. Hal. Hal. Kill. Oh, oh, we didn't sweep it. Oh. We didn't sweep Meg's it. Meg's face. He had. So you're mad about Kyo so that he's here, here, and then you vote for him. Listen. Well, that means that you liked, let's see, who did Kyo beat? Kyo beat Roy, Roy Mustang. Mustang. So that means that you would have picked Roy Mustang over Hal. 100%. Okay. All right. Well, goodbye, Hal. Or no, oh no, oh no. Hal won, right? Yeah. Yeah, Hal won. Okay. Only in Pancake's mind. Okay. But Calcifer. Calcifer. <laughs> Calcifer. Man, he's, he's hot. How, how about the Witch of the Waste? Uh. Ooh. Yeah. <laughs> what about the Scarecrow thing? All right. So Captain Avatar. the Scarecrow? All right. Let me, ask you, let me ask you ladies a question. Captain Avatar from the, from the Twitch chat said that Goku would have been a, a smexier choice than Vegeta. Piccolo would have. So I actually had Piccolo in the bracket. That's true. And then there were so many other good suggestions that I took Piccolo out because I didn't want to have two Dragon Ball characters. Piccolo is sexy. You would have picked Piccolo over Vegeta. Make the Piccolo noise. Ura, 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 ura. Yeah, exactly. That That's what I want. Sex. Yeah, it's like when, I he's, don't dr- think it's he like when he's drilling Piccolo. Sailor <laughs> Venus or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right. The next matchup in this crazy tournament is, because that was a pretty easy one, I get to delete Kyo now. Is Kakashi, who's still hanging around there, and uh, I got the best picture of Kakashi I can find up there, and Gilgamesh from Fate. They're very. They're Kakashi. Not, they're Kakashi. not Kakashi. Oh wow! Sweep it. Bye, fucking Gilgamesh, and your tiny penis. <laughs> I only did, I only oh went with God. him because he looked uh, better than the twelve year old. <laughs> All right, that's fair. It's so shocking. Um, we're gonna sweep this next one too, I think. The next, and then rounding out round two, as I put the images back up, we have Sashomaru, aka Fluffy, I think, as he's been called. Fluffy. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> so unsexy. It. I believe Makoto is not even in this tournament anymore. Mm, yeah, and Fluffy. Victor Give it to me, Fluffy. from Yuri on Ice. Victor, 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 Shishomaru. Victor. Shishomaru. Go back to Shishomaru. It's Shishomaru. Oh my god, please don't make it. Shishomaru. <laughs> sorry, not sorry. Yeah. All right, Victor is gone. I'm surprised he beat Vegeta, honestly. Why are your tastes so realistic? Him? How could you? I don't understand what's sexy about Shishomaru. <laughs> uh, he walks around mysteriously. He he will groom you from a child. <laughs> Face tats? That's you gotta love face tats. Too timely. <laughs> It's like a Ghislaine Maxwell. Yikes. Uh, throwback. No, he's just sexy looking. Yeah. He's just walking around. He's like, I just have a robe on. Do you want to see what's underneath? <laughs> yeah, you do. <laughs> my demon dick. You, my it's got demon fucking dick. fangs. It's like a dog's <laughs> penis. <laughs> it's like that dick that that girl like envisions from Black, from uh, from Battle Royale, and it's like his penis has like demon eyes and a fangs and shit. Yeah, oh yeah. No, he just has a dog's penis. It's like a red rocket. Oh, wow. Red rocket boy. <laughs> <laughs> All 
I, was, I, I think I have a drop on here some, somewhere that has something to do with dog penises. Anyway. <laughs> All right. We're at the final four now. This is like when the announcers are going crazy. Oh, it's so the final four. I need some energy oh. from the boys. Yeah. Okay. Uh, uh, are there any characters that you were expecting to see in this bracket that haven't shown up? Like, where you're mm-hmm. like, oh, I guarantee this one will be there. There were a sure. couple, but I yeah. cannot remember them. I, can't think I mean, of... there were some. I was kind of shocked at some of your choices. Um, Wh- which choices were you shocked at? Like he. Yeah, let's try to Victor. defend ourselves. You were shocked at he. Yeah, I mean, like everybody knows, I think he is sexy. But well, that's like, why I put he in there because I knew you liked him. Yeah, but you know that normal mm. people don't think he's sexy. I don't know that. Um, he is just a default. <laughs> uh, <laughs> like Victor, I yeah, I didn't put. I don't. Like, I don't remember did, where he came I from. Put, but. I put Victor. Because he why? is sexy, and I well, I would have put Victor had you not. Well, Coswell, you can go off with Victor, and you guys can go, you know, do the thing. Maybe I will. You should, <laughs> because I don't like that he's in my bracket, and you shouldn't have put him there. So we're gonna <laughs> oh, have okay. a throw hands. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I, my strategy, I was just trying to get the like the gamut of the different types. You know, I had Guts yeah. on there, I had Dojo on there, I had Makoto on there, I had Gilgamesh. Like I was trying to. Uh, just touch on every the, the, would you would you your preferences might have been I didn't know what Not I was going to get into that was Not my strategy all right shall we go on with the final with the semifinal let's do it I think I need like some some like some jam music on here do I have like uh NBA jam uh, I thought you're gonna play your like sexy time music <laughs> I was looking for it but I couldn't find it he's on fire <laughs> oh it's a barn burner Okay, I'll find it some other time. You could listen to some Bloodhound Gang. That would be good right. for this. The semifinal, the first semifinal is Gojo versus Howl. Let me put up, put up some photos for the ladies um, and for the Gojo. Twitch chat. Gojo, Gojo. and Gojo. Howl. Gojo. Gojo. Wow. Caroline, do you want to give input? No, I said Gojo. It's just that oh, Howl is a, like a pretty boy I and mean, nothing else. Wait, hold on. Howl, okay. Howl is a homeowner. And it is movable. <laughs> okay, but we're not talking that about almost... like what assets <laughs> they Gojo bring to a relationship. We're going off of pure like who the fuck is hot and who no, the but fuck that's is hot. Not. That's that is hot to me. I own my house and I can take it's school responsibility. You want. Yeah, I've got. I am Nothing responsible. <laughs> but the hottest people are. I disagree. I disagree. The hottest people are always the the, the bad boys, the unresponsible. He is a bad one. boy. He's a fucking bird. <laughs> <laughs> That, like, Listen, hangs out with Howell demons. owns a house. Gojo owns Bitcoin. Like, that's really the levels of financial yeah, okay. stability Definitely you're looking at between going the two. Then. I don't talk to me about Bitcoin. No, I'm still Team Gojo. Gojo. I, I, okay, I think Gojo's winning. Okay. <laughs> yes, yes. Howell's the, the loser. I mean, I love Howell. <laughs> I like but, Howell. Like, I don't know, compared to Gojo. It's All just, right. yeah, Gojo will be going to the final... <laughs> It's whatever. You're wrong. It's whatever. And in the second semifinal, we have Kakashi versus Sh- Sashimaru. I throw, oh. I throw the photos Ka-ka-shi. back up here for you. Kakashi, please. Oh, okay, please. so here we go. We got. I gotta get. I gotta delete how uh, we got Kakashi. Kakashi spinning his shuriken, and we have shuriken. Will you call it that again? <laughs> shuriken. <laughs> yeah, a couple more times. Really fast. Yeah. Shuriken, shuriken, shuriken. <laughs> okay. And I'll go with Kakashi just for that. We've got. Uh, <laughs> A bloody photo of K- oh. their fan art. Oh. Over. There go. Also, I want to shout out Big Brain Dane in the chat who said Howell's house is basically a magic RV, which exactly. is the greatest <laughs> description I've ever heard of. It. I want it is a magic RV. I want a magic RV and a man that will take me to where I can see all the wildflowers. So true. Wow. Well, you wow. fucked that up, Meg. So there you go. All right. Listen, so we got I'm going off looks alone. We got here. Kakashi, and we got. Will you look up maskless Kakashi? Maskless Kakashi. Yes. Like you are hiding half of his beauty and we're picking him solely on You his... fucking picked you yeah. picked Gojo because he was gonna blindfold you. I mean what the fuck do you want? <laughs> <laughs> there you go. How, how's that picture? There you go. Well, he needs to go get some of that filler taken out. There. Maskless Kakashi. Kakashi. Wow. <laughs> oh Jesus. <laughs> no, they're actually facing off. This was my nightmare. <laughs> uh Caroline? Yeah, yeah, I'm not going with dog boys, so, you know. <laughs> I mean, men right. have cat girls, we have dog boys, all right? But we also have cat boys. Yeah, but cat boys are yeah. big pussies. That's fair. 
<clears throat> are they? Yeah, they're cat boys. Like My first anime yeah. crush Literally. was a cat boy. Yeah, I got cat. I got everything on the soundboard. Yeah. Right. Yeah. See, no, I don't want my man to do that when he comes. <laughs> you want him to go. Ooh-ah, ooh-ah, ooh-ah. I would prefer that over. Yeah. Okay. All right. Also, uh, cat penises are barbed, and you don't want that. Oh yeah, that's true. True. Can we stop talking about yeah, animal right. genitalia? And, we can uh, talk about people genitalia if and, you want. And, and dolphins and uh, sea otters rape their victims. Please stop oh, talking sea about it. Necrophiliacs. Sea otters are like sea otters are evil. Sea otters they're are cute. necrophiliacs. Yeah, you think they're cute, but they will fuck. They will kill you and then fuck your Listen, dead corpse. L- I can Jesus. tell you all about fucking sea otters. Okay. They fucking, Wait, the no. way you can tell the difference between male and female is because the males rip the female's noses off during sex, so the female noses are red and the male noses aren't. And then also, they're really known for decapitating birds and seals and having sex with their dead heads. You too can make a difference. <laughs> Donate to the Sea Otter Foundation today. To get a female sea otter a nose job. <laughs> to... For for female sea otter noses everywhere. How many harbor seals? For can just we five save? cents a day, you. Okay. All right. All right. Why? Why did I just we want do the this? audio clip of Meg saying, "I can tell you about fucking sea otters." <laughs> <laughs> oh man, I wish we had a I wish we had a, a fancier studio. I'm sure we could. We should Listen, probably do that. This is my third nose I'm on because I keep fucking the sea otters. <laughs> 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 they keep ripping my nose off, and man, I get so many medical expenses from it. <laughs> Congratulations to the one listener that has uh, animal penis fun facts on their AAA bingo card today. You are you're lighting it up. Bingo! You get $20. Yeah. You're welcome. <laughs> All right. Wow. wow. Okay. This is a lot. <laughs> this is turning into. I just want everyone to know that I, personally, I feel like this segment is on fire right now. We are fucking crushing it. All right. We are at the final. We have Gojo from Jujutsu Kaisen versus Kakashi. Kakashi. Yeah. Uh, you, we need to have at least a discussion first. You can't just. <laughs> you, know, you can't just. Uh, there's no suspense. There's so, no intensity. Okay. Gojo's manliness is fifty percent. Kakashi's is one hundred and ten percent, and he's so mysterious. And he's got like an eye transplant, and he, I don't know. There's just something sexy about him covering half his face all the time. But and we also have two because massive I feel Naruto like, fan girls in here. I feel like not even because of that, but because Gojo is has always been seen as the Kakashi 2.0. Yeah, and I but... think it all stems from Kakashi and his maskies. Yeah, you might say Kakashi is Gojo's daddy. So yeah. if you're looking for and big Kikashi daddy energy. can be my daddy too. So here we go. There we go. All right. All right. So 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 pancake. You picked Kakashi, obviously. Caroline, who did you pick? Kakashi. And Meg. Gojo. Oh my goodness. Oh, oh you suck. <laughs> no, just kidding. No. In a in a surprising turn of events, I believe. Yes, indeed, Cotton. Kakashi has won the Smexy Boy Tournament. Oh, boy. Yay. <laughs> so I want to ask each of you, outside of the bracket, who was your personal favorite to win? Sure, like yeah. If All no right. one else was here interrupting your picks, who would have won it for Pancake, you? Pancake, you go first. I'm thinking. Don't got, put me yeah, on the spot I like that, motherfucker. Caroline, they, don't, they, they have no idea, so how about you? I, don't, I really don't know because... None of these choices were like, oh, yes, this is the sexiest man in anime. And I can't even tell you who that would be. But Hisoka, maybe? Hisoka. No. <laughs> uh, well, that, is Hisoka, I, I don't even know. Is Hisoka sexier than Kakashi? No. Yes. We have a no, no. and a yes. yes Clown no. boy. Meg, do you know who Hisoka no, is? No, I'm not talking about, like, she with his no. makeup on. I'm talking about, like, when he's out of the shower and he's all like... <sighs> Oh, so one shot of him. I can put a picture up of of Hisoka if you want. One butt shot. Is that enough to overturn everything we've worked so hard for? It's not even the butt shot. It's just him. But that is the shot with his butt. There you go. I got it right there. There you go. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. No. You were just talking about red hair. Like, what's your deal? What do you actually like? 
Me? Yes. Oh, that's a hard one. I've known you for 15 years. That's what she said. And I am just said. dumbfounded. <laughs> uh, All right, so I'm, I'm hearing that kick, that oh, Hisoka is what not about, what about um What about Ginkgo from Mushishi? He's hot. Ginkgo? What? <laughs> just white hair, but he's the most plain dude ever. I don't know. Something about it. Do you like white bread? He just likes one. No. I feel like he's like white hair oh, missing no, an that's eye. Not that's not it. I love this guy. But I don't. No. No. I, but he's kind of got like this sexy adventure man about him. We have a new we have a new viewer about, on Twitch that says that Kakashi cannot dance like Gojo. How about Ooh. Shigure? I feel, I feel like Shigure. what we're doing here is that girls like guys with white hair. Because all of these guys have had missing an eye <laughs> and messed up eyes. Oh, or Hitori. What are you just calling out like fruits basket characters now? I'm just talking about like you guys picked Kyo, but like I think Shigure and um, Hitori are way hotter. Mason, who who did you think was going to win this tournament? I thought Gojo was going to win. He was one of my top picks personally, mm -hmm. and he's who oh. I wrote down. So, got it. Uh, I was between him or Guts, but after hearing the anti big boy sentiment, I was like, it's definitely Gojo. Kazo, who did you think was going to win? Guts I to act win. Was, oh, I actually went with Kakashi. I wrote wow. Down wow. You did it. Yeah. Wow, fantastic. Uh, uh, yeah, I just figured, one, he is like definitely one of the sexier ones, and also he's very well known, been around for a long time. So I was like, all right, people are going to be more familiar and comfortable with him. So, yeah. That was well, I said too. Levi, so I got bounced early. So, wow. What if Levi's pretty hot. What if Reagan from Mob Psycho was on this bracket? Reagan? Yeah. No. I don't think. No? Yeah, you don't I like don't him? what they look like. Listen, I wouldn't uh, suck Reagan's dick. Just... <laughs> I'm not going to continue with that. That, uh, that, that one ups me. Listen, I um, I wouldn't be physically able to suck Guts's dick, but I would fucking give it my best like, is shot. It, is like, is it's big? <laughs> oh it's as, it, have you ever seen a turkey it's get It's too stuffed? big to be called a penis. Yeah, so it's a like, massive it's mound like of flesh. to my forearm. Sausages! Sausages! <laughs> This is a very interesting episode. All right, all right. So, how, so ladies, how do you think? How do you feel like we did though? Do you think that we created a bracket that was adequately sexy for you, or did we miss key sexy people that needed to be in the bracket? I think you missed a couple sexy people. Like who? Hisoka. Hisoka um, again. A couple people from. Uh, the whole cast of fruits basket. The whole fr cast of fruits basket. But you uh, bounced Kyo early, so <clears throat> clearly Griffith, the rest of them. Griffith is really sexy. Griffith. Uh, there's some from. Uh, he would have done Demon well with Slayer. the white hair. Yeah, some characters right. from Demon Slayer. <laughs> hmm. Maybe it should have been a 32 character bracket, then we could have had all of yeah. them in there. Caroline, how do you feel like we did? I think it was pretty good. You got, you certainly got all the, um, like a lot of the obvious choices. I think. Um, but yeah. All right. I don't know well, why there was there I, there's that one there's yeah. just this one character for me, but I cannot for the life of me yeah pinpoint like, that's, which character it is for me. Well, I think was my character is probably it's probably guts for me, but he got knocked out because he's just too manly for you guys. <sighs> he's yeah, he's just too ripply. He's too manly. Don't like all I that. Get it. I, I get don't it. like ripply. I not, don't like muscles. Not everybody can handle a beast like that. A stallion. You got him all to yourself then. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. You can look at it like that. I'll break him like a wild horse. I doubt <laughs> it. Oh my god. Can we stop with the animal? <laughs> I do please. Like... Woof. Next thing you're going to tell no. me that spirit was sexy. All right. Well, we, we all we, know Calcifer would have won. You thought Simba was <laughs> Thank sexy. You. Thank we you. Had I did think Simba was sexy as a kid. We had determined today that Kakashi is the sexiest. <laughs> And so it is written into law with fist pump from Tony. And um, there you have it. So maybe maybe the first annual winner of this competition. Should well, we feel the need to do this again? We should definitely idea. do one where the ladies make a bracket for the men. Because this I think this turned out so well that it only makes sense to do it again in reverse. Here's the problem. I don't though. think we can bring the same energy, but Here, I'm listen. more than welcome to try. The problem with doing a girl bracket is there's only three types of anime women. Okay, wait a second. Wait a second. We have drops for everything on this podcast. Number three. Okay. Number three that is. wasn't necessary. <laughs> but um, <clears throat> there's little girl. Little girl? Yep. Number no boobs. will not have any little girls number on this. Two. There you go, number two. No, they choose, they choose little girl body, mm -hmm. big, 
bitch bimbo. Mm-hmm. Or I have glasses, so you think that's kind of sexy because I'm nerdy and can't do anything. Those are the mm-hmm. only three types of women. It's the same fucking character models with different color hair. So okay. it's and like almost we, pointless. And as we learned today, the only one character model for men is the guy with white hair and missing an eye. <laughs> you right. Muscle or no muscle. <laughs> oh my God, Would you right. like your white haired character with or without the muscle? It's a ten dollar <laughs> extra charge. <laughs> oh, Jeez. let's flirt and get one without. <laughs> you gotta pay to have not have muscles in this universe. All right. Well, this was a lot of fun, but I think we should go to the news break because we have eight anime from winter 2022 to cover. And although I feel like people would rather just hear girls talk shit all day, um, we have a uh, season to get to. So who would like to read the in-show trivia question? Me from over me, here. Me, me, me. Oh, I'm just yeah. kidding. I can't, I can't see it from over here. I'm fucking blind. Caroline? <laughs> In honor of the anime futsal boys, what the heck is futsal? And we'll figure that out after the news break. If you have to ask, you can't afford it. Thank you to Pancake and Meg for coming on the podcast. You guys were awesome. Anytime. Bye, bitches. Bye. 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 Anime Addicts, Mitsuki's here, and I'm bringing you your anime news break, starting off with a follow-up news from the Sega Arcade fiasco. The Sega Arcades in Japan have been doing pretty poorly because of COVID, and another company took an opportunity to come in and save these arcades. The Global Entertainment Network for Dreams and Aspirations, or Genda, announced on Friday that it acquired the other 14.9% of the shares of the uh, arcade and amusement centers that were previously owned by Sega. And they're going to be renaming these as Gido, which stands for Get Into the Gaming Oasis. This is going to be applied to all 196 Sega arcade centers across Japan that were purchased. So they had purchased the first 85.1% of the shares of the Sega arcades back in December of 2020, which was right about around in the middle of COVID. And uh, now it looks like this has been been a completed transaction so the good news is that these arcades will continue to exist but the iconic sega logo will be removed from the arcades next up the manga hoshi no samidare or lucifer and the biscuit hammer very very strange uh, title is getting a tv anime in the summer of 2020 it looks like nobuaki nakanishi of Mahojin guru guru is going to be helming the anime and the original creator satoshi Mizukami of Planet With is going to be in charge of the series composition where one day college student Yuhi is approached by talking lizard Sir Noi Crescent who immediately launches into a fantastical story about the powerful mage Animus who intends to destroy the earth with his biscuit hammer a huge contraption looming high in the earth's orbit earth's only hope lies with the, with the princess and her beast knights whose task is to protect the princess and defeat Animus Sounds pretty interesting, has a lot of uh, talk going on online, so if you're a fan of these sorts of fantasy stories, look out for Lucifer and the Biscuit Hammer in the summer. Next up, another new anime, Key's Mixed Media Project Prima Doll is getting a TV anime in 2022. The uh, visual novel company Key is going to be having an anime adaptation uh, in the multimedia format from from Prima Doll. This was announced pretty recently, and Key, in case you haven't know, in case you didn't know, is also the studio behind Clonade, Canon, uh, Air, and uh, several other properties. So the synopsis is a cafe located in the Imperial Capital's Fifth Ward. Girls who work there are autonomous mechanical dolls, also known as automata. Imagine that. They were originally created as weapons for the Great War that ended only a few years ago, and now they are looking for new roles in a peaceful world. Sounds like Maho Romantic. So if you are a fan of the, of that story, the director is Ten Shoal of Azure Lane, and the studio is Beebury Animation Studios. So we'll have to look out for this Prima Doll coming out in 2022 as well. And lastly, another new anime, light novel, Mushi Kabadi, Mushi Kabuti Hime is getting a TV anime in 2022 also with some uh, exceptionally gorgeous promo art, I will say. The Princess of the Bibliophile is going to be getting made into an anime helmed by director Taro Iwasaki, 
of Ama, of Ama Ma to Inazuma, Sweetness and Lightning, which we've covered on the podcast. It is a studio Madhouse anime. So if you are a fan of Madhouse, Ama Ma, Sweetness and Lightning, whatever, look out for this coming up. The manga has 2 million copies in print, and Yui launched the historical drama series in, um, on the Shosetsuka Ninaro website in September of 2015. And it's apparently been uh, doing pretty well. So if you're a fan of uh, these sorts of, I'm not really sure quite what to call it, I guess uh, historical drama as it was put, look out for the Princess of the Bibliophile coming out of 2022 also. This is Mitsugi and this was your anime news break. And now as always, it's time to get back to the podcast. Oh God, I hate this song. So annoying. Skip ad. Skip. Hi, it's Vince with Oh, Sham fuck wow. no. You'll be saying wow. I'll be saying you wow, towel. you're so fucking it's annoying. Like a shammy, it's a chamois, like it's a towel. Oh, who a really cares? Skip. Way. Anime addicts, do you miss ads like that? Do you miss your buddy Vince from Sham Wow? Of course you don't because we don't torture you with ads like that. Instead, if you want to support the podcast, you can help us stay ad free by going to aaapodcast.com slash join. Hey, you can head over to patreon.com slash AAA podcast for those of you that like Patreon. And you're going to get our hentai episodes, our hobby addicts, our after parties. And, of course, it's going to be commercial free, so you get all that. What else could you possibly want? Again, over at aaapodcast.com slash join. And now, back to the podcast. And now, great moments in Anime Addicts Anonymous history. All right, well, speaking of my mother, uh, here's one that she'll relate to. You never thought you'd get that level of perversion from Chobits. So here we are, Mitsugi and his mom watching Chobits. She's seen all of it. So Chi is the person common Chobits, and about as cute as any anime character will ever be. And he's sitting here, and he can't figure out how to turn her on. Where's the on button? Is it on her ears? Is it in her fucking eyes? Is it in her mouth? Like, he's trying to find the on, on button. I think he even pushes on her nipples. Where is the on switch? I've checked everywhere. <coughs> and then he goes, wait, I haven't checked this one spot. And my mother, she's probably watching this, and she's like, oh my god, what is fucking happening? And I'm just like 11. I'm not really fully grasping what's happening here. But he straight up sticks his fingers in Chi's vagina to fucking turn her on as if the viewer isn't going to get what's happening. Well, a little 12-year-old Mitsugi didn't really maybe fully grasp what was occurring at that moment in time but my mother sitting five feet away goes holy shit he just stuck his fingers in the most sacred of areas and she comes to life just like that welcome back to the podcast as I rebuild the studio the way it was before the ladies were here oh one more small adjustment okay back Full reset, default mode. Uh, in honor of the anime Futsal Boys, what the heck is Futsal? As I turn the camera back on. A lot of stuff going on here. Welcome back. Yes, indeed. Hello, everybody. And um, Futsal is a soccer-based game played on a hard court, smaller than a normal soccer pitch, and mainly indoors. So if you want my opinion, Futsal is indoor soccer, basically. That's what I would say. With uh, a different ball and lower walls. And a different ball like and special level. techniques. Yes, and uh, they do. And characters that look like they belong in Kuroko no Basuke. All right, so sports. I love them. <laughs> Mason, are you ready for your for your shining moment? Yeah, I don't know how we're gonna follow up that last segment, but uh, we're gonna try. It'll be pretty tough uh, by any measure, but here we go. It's time for unexplored pictures with Mason. Get your popcorn ready! It's time for unexplored pictures with Mason! Oh my goodness, I only do this segment for that drop. I hope you guys all know that. Uh, Everything past this is just excess. But the uh, movie I want to talk about today is called Pompo the Signophile, aka Ega Daisuke Pompo-san. This came out last year in 2021, aired at Anime NYC. And I was waiting for G Kids to release an announcement of when the heck it's coming out stateside, but they didn't. And I figured, you know what? My good pal Kazuo, quote unquote, impressive Tony, don't forget to subscribe, does movie reviews. Right. <laughs> and who better to join me on the movie that talks about making movies? So it, simply put, yeah, go ahead. It was, it, it was, it was meant to be. It was yeah. so perfect. 
exactly. Uh, so simply put, this movie is a film about making a film. It centers around Gene Feeney, a movie buff and like beaten down assistant to the titular Campo, who's a talented movie director. And Gene Feeney, despite his like passion, has like the confidence and personality, like the charisma of Alfredo from Ratatouille, which is to say none. He's just this like down dumb guy. He looks like Tanaka from Odd Taxi with these like big uh, bags under his eyes. Like he's just not doing great. But you know, all these doubts he has circulating inside of him uh, kind of just is pushed out of the way when Pompo's like, "Hey, I'm going to direct you to direct my brand new script," and he's pushed into the limelight and has to make a film. And what follows for the rest of the movie is a roller coaster of ups and downs and loops as the new work is created from shooting on location to financing the production and most importantly, editing the damn thing where the already sharp visual style ramps up the flare, get these crazy sequences of Jane in a chair just going ham and it's pretty fun. So that's kind of the, the what the movie is all about. Uh, Cosmo, did you watch this thing and what did you think? Yeah, so definitely watched it. Um, actually watched it today before the podcast. And nice. I my my thoughts overall on, on it were positive. I actually really enjoyed it. It's it was cool to kind of get that um that perspective as someone who is really big both into anime and into filmmaking. It's it's cool to see a story being created about a character who is also himself as they, as the title says, a cinephile, somebody who is just obsessed with how movies are made and all of that. So I think it was really cool to see. It it was not without its anime tropes, you know. Yeah. <laughs> like you said, the main character, his personality is very much like the kind of caricature of what an otaku is, you know, where it's just that, that um, I don't even know how you would describe it, but just that like panicked and sweaty and, you know, <laughs> awkward. And it's like, OK, I mean, I, I I get it that they are trying to pitch this to an audience of anime fans, but I, I felt like that was a little much. But overall, the, the concept of what they were doing was really enjoyable. Yeah, he definitely feels like an intern that has been on his first day for 12 years who's just overworked to the bone. And yeah. yes, a lot of these events are very far fetched of like, oh, all of a sudden you're directing with a new actress and yada, yada, yada. And some of the character designs were maybe a little excessive. Some butt shots were like maybe not to my liking. There were some problematic messages about like overwork and like massive financial risk. Um, yeah, it, it's a bit of a bumpy ride. But overall, the flaws really didn't pull me out and dampen the mood. Like it took me a while to get into the movie. But once I was, I was pretty strapped in and I enjoyed this film. Like... The visuals, the editing, the appreciation for the craft was like pretty stylistically conveyed. And it wasn't like overly preachy. I definitely liked it a whole heck of a lot more than the Shirobako movie. And of course, as everyone knows, because it was 90 minutes long, it was Kino. So really, what more do you need to say? Yeah, I mean, it, it's, it, I think it was very, very well done. What I found interesting was that it's a, obviously a movie about making a movie. And both the movie itself and the movie they were making in the movie yeah yeah were like really well shot like there were some really great um shot selections the the music i felt was also really good uh both in the movie they were making and in the actual movie itself so i feel like the overall quality of the parts were really high you know it was very well animated they it was it was written very well the music was really good so I think that you can tell they put a lot of uh, energy and maybe a lot of love into making this. And I, I feel like it really shows, you know. Yeah, uh, it was uh, good. So I know on your channel you do a, like, do you skip it, do you stream it, or do you watch it in theaters? And eventually yeah. this will be coming out, hopefully. Um, what would be your recommendation for Pompo the Cinephile? So I think for anyone who is a movie fan and by movie fan i mean somebody who likes to know how movies are made i think this is an absolute must watch day one in theaters if it comes out on blu-ray you have to buy it because this is speaking to that audience of people right so myself i'll definitely be, be purchasing it if it comes out on blu-ray or seeing it in theaters if it comes out locally um if that's not you though if you're not the person who watches all the special features and behind the scenes stuff on your blu-rays then i would say you know still give it a stream whenever it comes out uh, if it's available online, check it out because it is 
uh, overall really good. Even if even if that's not your vibe, I think it's still something that anybody can enjoy, and maybe would open your eyes to um, a kind of world that you are not yourself familiar with. So I think it's worth at least checking out streaming when it comes out. And I agree. Uh, it was fun. It was good. It was snappy. It then overstay its welcome, and it just it oozed style when it needed to. And yeah, who knew editing looked so cool? So yeah, yeah. Uh, As he was editing, I'm like, I know. I'm like, I think that is DaVinci Resolve. That's the editing program I use. I'm like, that's yeah. so cool. <laughs> I'm right there. I'm editing with them. Uh, it's, yeah. uh, it's a good time. Uh, check it out. And uh, I'm sure there's tons of like references to classic Hollywood moments or motifs that i didn't even catch so probably even worth a rewatch but that's uh that's all i got the good movie good watch movie please <laughs> wow tag team action there in the un unexplored pictures i like it yes. yeah yeah i'm just glad i didn't give you a, a crappy movie and you're like oh, oh watch, i'm glad i watched this <laughs> i'd have been like why am i here why this am i back i just scare him away <laughs> for another five months yeah. all right uh yeah we can move on Cool. All right. Well, it's time to do some mailbags, guys, so let's hit it. It's time for an almighty anime mailbag. Anime. 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 M -m -m mailbag. Bag, 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 bag. Oh, it feels good. <laughs> well, feels here we right. are. In the mailbag segment, in which you can submit a mailbag on W... Uh, sorry, I was, gonna, I was gonna do the whole www dot thing. AAAPodcast.com. Just click on the mailbag button and send us any question or short conversation topic you would like us to respond to. Uh, now we actually have... HTTP colon slash slash. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, forward slash forward slash something I would do. slash hyphen hyphen underscore. <laughs> Yeah, well, we I have do. two uh, to read out today, so sh um, I'll just do the first one here from Raggedy Doctor. Hey, addicts, I was wondering, what are your favorite and most disliked anime tropes, i.e. beach episodes, the power of friendship, OP protagonists, etc.? I personally am a sucker for characters flexing on each other and really hate it when the lolly gets looted. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Look forward to your answers, and thanks for making my anime addiction so much worse. Thank you, Raggedy Doctor. So, uh, Mitsugi, what's your answer there? I hate it when characters overreact and act like morons to relatively normal situations in life, you know? So, when they're, like, flailing around and, like, having tantrums yeah. and stuff or, you know, uh, jumping out windows because a girl... I don't know. Has a has a cute haircut. Like I don't fucking know what they do. It's or, just the or guy when, who likes um, Onizuka. Or when there's yeah. a surprise right before a, a scene transition, and the character goes, eh? 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 <laughs> <laughs> they scream. The, they make it louder and higher pitched every single time. They try Sione, to outdo each other. See, Onizuka is like, I got a girl in the back of my motorcycle, and she's not wearing any panties. Oh, oh, oh. This is what, this is what Onizuka does. Oh. Uh, but he like, also drops the people's elbow onto that crest so many times from like the fourth story of that building. So, <laughs> like, really, crest yeah, up. I feel so bad for, for Vice Principal <laughs> Uchiyamada. Yeah, you get people that haven't seen GTO. You really need to. You should. Um, yeah, it's so good. Yeah, I mean, and uh, but like beach episodes, hot spring episodes, they're just a waste of time. Really, uh, I don't think they're the most annoying thing I've ever seen in anime, but. They they just don't really generally add much, and I feel like they make they do episodes like that when the personally I feel like it's when a, like a manga just doesn't have enough content to fill a full season, and they're like we got to have a bullshit episode. I'd mm -hmm. kind of like to go back and see the manga and see if that episode's actually in there. Like, do they really go to the have the bed to the beach in this manga? But how about you guys? Um, I think for me it's just whenever you have characters that are completely one dimensional, right? Like. Um, I, I, I feel like it happens fairly often, right? But in like the really good anime, you have characters that are a little deeper than that. So it's not just, this is your Moe character and this is your stoic character. And it's like, those are probably the aspects of anime that turn me off the most. Um, and even in kind of the movie that we were talking about, Mason, you have a couple characters that are like that. And it's like, all right, I mean, I get it that, it, but it just it just feels lazy. It just feels like you're not really, I don't know. You, you just are kind of slapping on a template and and moving on. But what's the best one? The best oh. trope of anime? Because they ask for both. Oh oh, my favorite trope. Your favorite and your least favorite. Okay, well that's my least favorite. My mm -hmm. favorite. 
uh, now that I haven't thought about it at all, and I'm trying to think of my favorite. Uh, well, we can we can skip to I, either either one of us, I, and we can come back. I will say, the uh, this it's 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 not good, but it is my favorite, and it is the constant escalating of like power in anime. So like when you have your your the good guy who you know is is finding a villain that is just a little bit more powerful than the last one. It's like, oh, no, is he going to lose? No, he's going to win. And then it just keeps happening over and over again. Like, that is, it's not good, but it is, you know, something that I enjoy. Numbers go up is fun. Yes. Mm -hmm. I love numbers. Mason? Uh, similar to Kazuo, my worst trope is definitely, like, the bland main character that's really just there for the viewer self-insert. They make him as, like, bog standard as possible. So you, a lonely otaku, can, like, be like that's me just like me i'm a gamer too like whatever it is those usually end up leading to the worst characters i feel like we get asked the like trope question a bunch so every time i come up with a new one i'm gonna go with the glasses push that oh, goes yeah. into a glare because it's so like unobtrusive like you're just like ah they did the thing and you can move on like it doesn't distract well, it doesn't take it away there are some like meta obviously twisting the tropes is the best thing ever but that's not a trope itself um so i'm just gonna go with that and i'll make up a new answer next time although i do remember on one show we watched recently was it aquatope or something else where there was one character with glasses and they literally did it in every scene they were in yep. and sometimes <laughs> several times in a scene and i'm like oh my god stop oh my god that was so irritating Listen, otherwise you it's fine <laughs> spent so much time practicing finding the right angle for the lights yeah. to hit that you would flex that all the time it's like you just want to get them those glasses they give to little babies where it just wraps around your head. Hold <laughs> <laughs> still, damn it. Well, my least favorite trope is the accidental boob grabs because they're just mm. so... Yeah. Ugh, I hate, I hate wow. fan service come already, new way but every that time. is it just lot, so too. intrusively weird and gross and I don't like it. And they do it so... Uh, they, 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 feel, they feel like so tempted to do it every single anime i watch i'm like don't do it don't do it and they're like i'm gonna do it i'm like oh, guys. <laughs> don't do it i'm gonna do it <laughs> um also the over <laughs> overly loving sisters because that's fucking weird and Man. the alcohol gasp because i find it irritating every single time. i like the alcohol gasp i some people Wait, the love the alcohol gasp i what hate is that what is it alcohol okay gasp? So, so you sip 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 Oh yeah, 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 yeah. All right, like, Makoto, whatever. Really or whatever. Yes, or Misato is like coined that. Eva, I think. Yeah. Slam yeah. the beer can down. Misato is cool, and therefore the alcohol gasp is cool. You know, yeah. I kind of have a game now in my head. Whenever I'm watching an anime and I see a character drinking, and I think about, okay, on a scale of one to ten, how loud is this gasp going to be? How how insane is this gasp going to be? And then you just kind of see if you're correct. That's funny. Uh, just by the the glugging noises. Oh, and, and we gotta move on. Best trope for me is you know the tournament arcs. You can't you like if you got a good tournament arc, it doesn't matter. Tournament arcs are great. Um, also, uh, berserker modes. You know when you got the main character and they get angry and then they go like they go like hog wild and then like fuck this guy up and I'm like oh it's so good. I think tournaments the guy who literally is berserk. <sighs> Yeah, I, I've never seen Berserk, but I ever, know. a lot of characters have Berserker modes. But they don't. <clears throat> a lot the, of them uh, do. Not like him. Not like him. Okay, I mean, well, maybe he does, but I haven't seen it yet. Tournaments are cool, but you're right. Like, the Berserker thing is kind of like, oh, shit, it's on. And it's like, it happens. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Even just, like, the aura coming out. Like, Hajime and Weepo had the aura. Like, the eyes would turn green. They'd have, like, a little glow. Even, like, an initial D, they'll show the car with, like, a glow around it. Like, oh, his aura is so intense. Like, and then there's, like... Clear back to Gohan, like you just knew whenever Gohan got mad, she, like fucking something crazy was gonna happen, yeah. and it always did. So, man, Gohan is like the OG fucking, <laughs> like needs anger management so bad. And then um, he got it and became very lame. Yeah. Awesome, yeah. Apparently, the new movie though is gonna be mostly about Gohan, so we'll have to see. I'm excited for it. Uh, is that it, guys? Is that the end of the mailbag? Well, we got the second question. Oh, second mailbag. Okay. Um. We have an uh, I can read it super yeah, yeah. quick. Yellow highlight. Uh, is this comes from This Is Heavy. Good evening. So we all know about the beach episode and our general thoughts on them, but may I draw your attention to the lesser talked about baseball episode? Oh, For my me, goodness. Samurai Champloo is the goat baseball episode. 
but more recently they've enjoyed BNA's baseball episode as well. What are some of your favorites and what are your thoughts on them in general? Thank you for everything that you do. And I just included this because it's kind of similar to the trope of earlier. Yeah. Uh, I like baseball episodes. They're pretty cool. I thought the BNA baseball ones were better than the rest of the show. Um, Dora Hedoro's ones gave us Ebisu in a shark uh, costume dancing, so it doesn't get much better than that. Uh, baseball episodes, good. Do them more often, please. I feel like they're about as worthless as beach episodes or no, hot spring episodes. No, so funny. <laughs> I, I like sports. I mean, I don't, I don't know. I would just go watch some baseball anime. Go watch Good As Any. Honestly, people. It's still the best. I actually haven't seen all that many baseball episodes yeah. for whatever reason. Um, I, I, the last one I do remember watching was the really strange one from Sunny Boy. So um, <laughs> I don't know ball. if that really counts. Yeah, Monkey Ball. <laughs> and it was good. <laughs> Uh, best anime 2020. Apparently, there's a Gundam it. Build Fighters baseball episode, which <laughs> I, I would uh, love to see. I did not know. <laughs> this is such a long episode. <laughs> uh, well, let's get moving on. Uh, thank you for mailbags. Please send more. Let's move on. Final segment Winter 2022 Impressions Round Number Two. We've already passed My Dress Up Darling and Demon Slayer Season Two. So we have six shows total to pass. We've passed two, so we have four left. To pass, so what'll we'll make it? The uh, zoom, let's do it. <laughs> Today, zoom? we're gonna be doing impressions. Impression time, believe it. Ugh. All right. <laughs> Ugh. So, Every so, single time. Yeah, 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 yeah. So for the so for like, the first. over it. Yeah. Why don't we have Kazuo just do it live? Yeah. Why don't you just do it? Oh God. Uh, Cause, cause sure. He, okay. Because he grew up in say the before. Part? Yeah. Right now, I'm an old man. All right. Yeah, is somebody else the, gonna do I'll, the second part? I'll, I'll do it. <clears throat> Okay. Today, we're going to be doing impressions. Impression time, believe it. There you go. <laughs> Very good. That's Very what my good. Shonen Boy voice sounds like. <laughs> All right, so I am uh, doing an anime called Futsal Boys, done by Dio Medea, who had, like, their most popular like, anime, I guess, are Domestic Girlfriend, Aho Girl. Uh, you know. Pretty wild that Medea is now doing anime. I mean, I thought it was just... Uh... <laughs> She's all over the map. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness! Um, so this is a this is a sports anime about futsal, as we, which, as we said, is like more or less indoor soccer with like fencing instead of you know like being in like a gym. Um, so it's set th- in like there's a bunch of uh, it's 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 very Kuroko no Basuke esque. There's this protagonist named Haru who gets all into futsal because he watches the under 18 world championship and gets inspired to play. And he joins this university where the futsal team is, you know, gearing up, I guess, to be competitive. And it's doesn't really do anything new for sports. I mean, it's basically here are these like this array of brooding, like I assume attractive uh, male shonen sports characters that all have extremely, uh, different hair colors and watch them show off as they vie for who is the best, you know, player of futsal. And then there's like the guy that doesn't want to pass the football, the, the soccer ball or whatever. And then there's like the overly ganky, the ball hog, the overly ganky guy who wants the team to do really well. The captain who's kind of stoic, you know, they touch upon like pretty much all of the, all of the tropes. And this anime wants to be Kunoko Nubasuke so badly. I mean, it's like, Oh, they they reference the you know players from from middle school or whatever, and how they're like these famous players. All the care, all the all the different teammates all have basically the roughly the same hair colors as Kudoku no Basuke. There's like start like like very intense red, green, blue, white, yellow. Like they hit every single hair color pretty much that you'd that you'd expect. You know, the char- they're doing superhuman things. Like, the one character just jumps, like, 12 feet in the air and does, like, a bicycle kick, like, you know, which would never happen. Um, see, see, I think it's funny that you went Kuroko no Basuke because from when I started watching it, I immediately was like, this is so similar to Haikyuu. Like, to me, it, it felt like someone told their friend or, or, or told their stepdad, who doesn't speak English, about Haikyuu and then that stepdad who kind of understood what they were saying and also like maybe doodles a little bit in his spare time was like I'm gonna make an anime and then (laughs) made this that's what it felt like was like a mistranslated (laughs) shitty version of Haikyuu it's like Haikyuu four people down in the in in the the telephone game 
Yes. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. It's like uh, you're looking at, you're watching Haiku. They got the sport wrong. Yes. <laughs> They're like, yeah, I don't know. They play a ball game or something, and then there's like guys, but they all look different. One's happy, Please, one's angry. Honestly, for the past three minutes, ever since Mitt said it's like indoor soccer with fencing, I'm just picturing soccer with swords, <laughs> and uh, <laughs> I'm having way more fun. That would be awesome. <laughs> we just stab the soccer all. The... <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's not. I don't know. I guess Kazuo, you watch this. I mean, I would you agree that it's not the worst thing in the world? I'm happy that they're at least playing fucking sports. Yeah, yeah I, I think it was just it's uninspired. It's yeah. formulaic. I think the animation was bad. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. It was like, it felt like there were frames missing, like when they're running for the soccer ball. It's like, yeah. okay, at least they're going to make up for it with the way it looks while the action's happening. Nope. Nope. It looked bad. Yeah, and yeah, it's, pre- it, it's pretty funny because like they'll, be, they'll, they'll kick the ball way out in front of them and, they'll, and they're sp- like sprinting as if there's room on these courts to run like that and there isn't. Yeah. It's like, it's like uh, 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 these courts are like probably 100 feet long. Uh, you know, we're not dealing with like 500 foot <laughs> football fields, like soccer fields here. So it's yeah. kind of silly. I don't know. It's, it's not very good. I'm, I'm definitely not going to pass it. I mean, it's got a terrible reviews online. Uh, yeah. So yeah, it's just another failed sports anime and the, we have not had much luck lately. It's been a long, a long while what? since something decent came along. You know what? You just reminded me. I did look up the studio that made this and mm-hmm. they also made a basketball anime, which I don't oh, think Jesus. was well received either. So I think it's kind of just what they do is they just make anime that are similar to other anime and but aren't good. Oh, Ahiru no Soda. I've seen Ahiru no Soda and it is definitely better than Futsal Boys. Okay, well that's good. So, it's also we also never covered it on the podcast because it ended up being pretty long. Fifty and, episodes. Yeah, it ended Oof. up being long. So anyway, this one's not gonna not gonna pass. I will be surprised if it's above a two. All right. And uh, <laughs> one down, a bunch to go. So who is, uh, Caroline, you're up next. Yep. So today I am reviewing Shikakuma no Saikyo Kenja, or the strongest sage with the weakest crest. Now, this show isn't exactly anything revolutionary. I do find it to be at least okay. Uh, the MC, um, it, it, like, okay, so let me first start by saying this is not an isekai. So it has a point for that. It is an actual fantasy there is reincarnation in the show but it's reincarnation into the same world it's just thousands of years into the future um so the mc is overpowered knows literally everything but that is at least explained by the fact that he is reincarnated from a very powerful sage um and it's also explained by the interesting current state of the world that he finds himself in because as i said thousands of years have passed between the main character's original life and the reincarnation's life and demons have infiltrated this fantasy world's uh, humanity and the government and all that. So they started slowly inserting false information in order to make them weaker uh, like in, and believe that the best magic practices are actually the weakest. Uh, and then by doing that, they'll eventually destroy all of humanity and you know take over the world and that kind of stuff. So that's kind of interesting. Um, also... The lack of fan service is freaking incredible. I am oh just, God. I was floored. Because <laughs> I was i was going in with, with very low expectations because it is about a main character who is a boy. And from what I could see from all the trailers, the opening, whatever, most of the characters in this show are going to be girls. And they're going to be part of his, you know, his battle party and whatever. But, and, and they are mostly girls. So you could say it's a harem in that sense. But only one of them is shown as the love interest. And only one of them has shown any sort of romantic interest into the MC. So I'm like, I, I was I was pretty excited about that. Um, so he does have the memory of an adult. And he is in love with this teenager. <laughs> but I guess since he did le- live like the reincarnated life, mostly unaware of his previous life, and eventually regained memories from that, it's kind of okay. But... Here's the thing. Here's the, here's where the issues come from with this show. I found out that informa- very important information on how he got to this world and his state in this life through a recap of the first episode. So I watched the first episode. Nothing is explained about his reincarnated life. It's just we just we see him as the strong sage in his first life, and then he reincarnates himself, and then boom, pop. He here he is in the body pop. of this. 12 year old boy i guess and i'm wondering like okay did he just he just appear 
as this 12 year old boy did he did he live a whole life and then and, and is, this, is this him now or did he just transform himself into this 12 year old boy like kind of like how they did with ascendance of a brook bookworm and honestly i had no freaking idea i was wondering when are they going to explain this they don't not until they have a, a minute and a half recap of this in the second episode of the first episode they explain things that happened in the first episode that didn't happen in the first episode and i was like what I was kind of, I was a little taken aback by that. And they did that a couple times where they leave out information and then they act as if they told you that information, which they didn't. And also the pacing is very, it's very quick. So the anime <laughs> is gaslighting you. It's like, no, I already told you. And you're like, but no, like, you no, never you told me. No, I definitely told you. And then, <laughs> like, okay. So then there's some people that are watching the show and say, well, well, and, and they will say things like, well, we already know, like, A, B, C, D. It happens in every single isekai. I'm like, uh, but I don't know what happens in this one. <laughs> he, like, it could have been it could have been in so many different ways. Like, it's confusing when they don't tell you this stuff. So, ugh, yeah, that was that was annoying. It's, and, But believe me, it's not bad. And I would consider passing it because I think that the issues regarding this magical world are interesting enough. And I am not insulted by how they treat uh, the women characters in this show but the issues where where that pacing comes in it's it's hard to get past and i think i have some better options on my list so unfortunately gotta fail it i love that old lady she's fucking great all right The next one here is um, the geniuses, the genius prince's guide to raising a nation out of debt. I think these titles are so <laughs> hilarious. A great, great name. Yeah, it's the, the uh, titles are fucking crazy. So, um, yeah, so this is a an anime done by Studio Yokohama Animation Lab, which has not done a lot of stuff. They've done definitely some hentai. <laughs> Oh. As I see, uh, Lapis, they have, they have nothing notable, really. Lapis relights the, I, I think this is a hentai, oh, it's an etchy, uh, called Miru Tights, which basically means, like, look at the, look at the tights. Yeah. Totally. They had very, is they had very, those tights, those tights were tights. <laughs> so, but this is a pretty Tight. highly watched show from the season we're in, at least. Um, if you were to look at the number of people that are watching every show, this one is number six so it's the sixth most watched show and amongst non-sequels it is number two so um and it's not an isekai so it does sound like one but it is not an isekai oh no i'm looking at the wrong anime that's the realist hero show that that caroline loves so much is the number two it's literally the same thing you pick the same show this show (laughs) this show is the number three show yeah well are you watching the same anime season i'm watching (laughs) Um, so, but this show is not as, not as bad as Realist Hero, I don't think. So, um, it's basically a story where the king of the kingdom becomes ill and the son, who's the prince, steps in to take over ruler, rulership of the kingdom and right off the bat, the, a neighboring kingdom senses that there's weakness in this particular kingdom that, that the prince is from. I can't remember the name of the kingdom. It's not very noteworthy honestly it's very strange name um and so there's there so basically the first two episodes of this are all just scenes of war basically done in the style that the show chooses to portray them in because the animation is not very good so they don't really have you know the budget to have these blistering action scenes with like millions of things moving independently um so but they'll have they have like like little dialogues of the of like the generals talking about their their military strategy while they like while they depict them as like chess pieces almost and um and the the prince is kind of he doesn't really give a fuck about ruling but he has to do it anyway he just wants to like his whole thing is he wants to get the kingdom to the to the point where it's less shitty than before and then he wants to sell it and retire <laughs> it's like i'm just going to make this kingdom worth more then i'm going to sell it and move on with my life um and so this neighboring kingdom attacks, and I guess because the kingdom the kingdom that you're following as the heroes has had training that is from like some of the better uh, military strategists in the in this continent that they're on, they actually repel the incoming arm the incoming enemy army even though they're outnumbered, 
And then they go and because they're trying to raise the kingdom out of debt because it's a shitty kingdom and up north where it's cold and there's mountains and not much like even usable land, they go and they take over like a gold mine from the neighboring country that that got repelled. And then there's the second episode is basically the neighboring country trying to take back their gold mine, which is, um, you know, more or less uh, the only thing of value that they thought there was to take because the other country that's also from the north doesn't have much either in the way of natural resources. And they discover that there's, even though the mine looks a, looks like it's been stripped bare, they find another vein of gold in the mine. And so they're going to, they think they can use that to get the kingdom out of debt and they repel the inc- the incoming enemy army. And there's some like strategy going on and how they kind of outsmart each other. Um, you know, it's it's really not that different than Realist Hero. It's just not as terrible, in my opinion. I think it's a little better. Uh, I'm sensing Mason doesn't necessarily agree. Um, I mean, anything's better than Realist, right? Like I didn't hate it as much as, as much I know, as you guys did. Which means the bar is that much lower for me to be impressed by this. I mean, this show has the exact this show has the exact same score online as the second season of Realist Hero. So I don't know how if that makes you feel good or not, but it does have a slightly better score than Realist Hero season I mean, what one. Does the score of second season have compared to the first? I don't know. I it, don't it have I don't have anything else honestly. Like I promise, the other shows are worse. Um, so <laughs> I don't really think this is a particularly amazing show. I think that I thought the first three episodes were not. I didn't feel like I was suffering through them. There's a couple cute girl characters. Um, the the main character isn't as big of a of a uh, Mary Sue as the realist hero guy, you know, he's definitely flawed and he's lazy and greedy and doesn't want to do anything and you know, whatever. So I'm going to pass it. I don't think it's not all that great, but like, let's be honest, there's about four good shows this season. So I don't really know what else to say. (laughs) You're a retro pick. (laughs) So, um, yep, I guess we'll pass it and I'm not trying to find a drop here. That's good. And but I have mostly fail drops on here, so I don't. I don't know. It's just just do it. Just do it. There you go. That don't have to work for now. Um, Realist Genius Prince's Guide to Raising a Nation Out of Debt. I do admit that it's very similar to Realist Hero. It's just not coming at the concept from the same angle. So I don't know why. I am so excited. It's really not as bad. <laughs> so. Yeah, so. but I wondered it's how bad. Okay. okay so- we well we already had this shit burger. <laughs> so oh, great, shit. I'm having shit shit nuggets. <laughs> Where's the shit burger drop? It's in here somewhere. You're just oh, not right. eating as yeah, much but shit. I already it's ate still this shit. Shit burger. Have another shit burger. <laughs> <laughs> it's an acquired taste. Yeah. That's for sure. All right. Um who's up next? It's uh oh, it's me again. Right. This was the other show I was um <laughs> I was torn between. So this other show um, is Tokyo 24 Coup, as it's called. Um, and this was a very weird show. It's done by Studio Cloverworks. We all know who Cloverworks is. It's definitely got a unique art style to it, so you'd have to kind of watch it to see what I'm talking about. But like the character models and designs are definitely different looking than most things I've seen. Um, I can't remember fucking much about this thing's storyline. There's a bunch of dudes, Ran, Koki, and Shuta, who are born in this ward of Tokyo called the 24th Ward that is an artificial island in the Tokyo Bay. And they have special powers, I guess. And they're like operatives or part of a group that does, that protects the ward from threats, I think, I guess. The, the first episode of this was really long. It was like a 50-minute first episode. So I only watched the first two episodes because I'm like, well, I already watched two episodes basically in the first episode. And in this first episode, which was actually good, um, they, um, they they essentially, like, a voice speaks to one of the one of the dudes and uh, or maybe all of them and shows them that there's, like, a train that's being revealed for the first time. It's like this train, this, this like, train line's maiden voyage. And on this maiden voyage of this train, um, a girl gets like her leg stuck on the tracks, like way down the from where the train starts, trying to catch her dog. And the dog gets stuck. It's caught. Its leash gets stuck on the tracks. And 
that's the worst dog in the world. We're going to have a dog just like takes off and just runs and then never comes back, no matter how much you call it. A lot it. of dogs do that. That's how dogs Fucking get terrible lost. dogs. Dogs that need training. That's how most do- <laughs> this dog, have you seen this? This dog literally is running from her for like three miles. He ends up in the middle of nowhere, like four miles dogs down this. Dogs will do that sometimes. Well, let the dog go. It's a piece of shit. Um, <laughs> oh, my God. Honestly. Well, you know, when you when, when you take your dog to get like it's good sir, it's good uh canine certificate or whatever, one of the very first tests is will it come when called? If it doesn't if your dog won't even come when called, like what the fuck are we doing? Here is uh, a runaway dog hack. If your dog is like goes up, gets outside and you can't get it to come back, make eye contact with the dog, make sure it sees you and then run away from it. And its instincts to chase <laughs> will kick in and it will follow you right back into the house. That's smart. So, that's a pro tip right there. Interesting. All right. Um, anyway, so this girl doesn't do that. She chases the dog, and the dog runs, and she gets her foot stuck on the tracks while she's chasing the dog. Um, so she's going to die because this dog wouldn't come and called. And so, and because these dudes saw it in a vision, which they don't explain what the vision was really in the first two episodes, they are able to use like their combination of special skills. Like one guy's like really fast, and one guy is like. Like a, like a hacker, and then they're able to get to her and get her off the tracks before the train kills her, basically. And that was like a very self-contained uh, storyline in the first episode that was pretty engaging, action-packed, uh, interesting, you know. But the, the, but then the second episode was absolutely just dog shit. Like, I don't even remember what was in it. I was like so bored. I was like, ugh. I was like, great. It looked good. And then I just envisioned this show becoming like this episodic one-shot series where they were just going to protect the 24th Ward from something different every episode, and it would never really have much of an interesting story. Um, so, plus the our animation style was a little weird. So, you know, I don't know. This one was okay, really. Like, I thought it was... I thought that when I watched it, it would be the one of the ones I would choose. Um, but I just don't think it's quite good enough. Like, it's, it's not going to do anything, and in the end, it's just going to be boring. So, did anybody else watch any of this? Nope. I watched a little bit of the first episode when I was trying to get the image for the title for this podcast episode, and it didn't seem that great. Okay. Well, yeah, I'm not going to pass it. You know, I don't think it's doesn't really have much to offer. You shall not pass! But I could see it um, being a, well, something that the listeners would pick, so we'll have to see about that. Um, and now we have uh, Mason with Requiem of the Rose King. Yeah, I pulled an audible because originally I was going to do Police in a Pod, but we're kind of running long on time, and uh, that deserves more discussion than what Requiem of the Rose King gets. So, real quick, this is JC Staff. I have no idea what JC Staff is is up to. They are just making cruddy stuff. Uh, It's based on the manga, but more so it's based on classic Shakespeare novel. This is War of the Roses, the Yorks versus the Lancasters. We follow Richard, the third son of the House of York, who is prophesied to be cursed and kind of telling that story. Um, it doesn't feel like a play. It doesn't really feel like an anime. It just it feels like a scatter shot of just someone vomiting story elements, rapid fire pace. Like, I think, Kazuro, you mentioned, like, oh, Futsu Boy sounds like someone told their dad poorly translated and that was, like, telephone their way. Yeah. Requiem of the Rose King sounds like a kid who's, like, trying to explain it to you, but just, like, <laughs> is just blubbering like has no sense of like tone or setting or like nuance they just are telling you things where these human shaped objects are doing things but there's no uh, there's no meaning behind it they're just like and then oh oh, i forgot and then this happened and then and then this and you're like you're just nodding your head waiting for it to be over that's kind of what the show is like it's like a toddler telling you about their dream they had last night exactly (laughs) have you ever dreamed so much that you wish you think you could have wished you thought you could you wish you could do anything (laughs) and smiles at the end like ta-da i fucking nailed that no no it's it's really bad um the manga for this seems way more beloved so maybe try that instead but requiem for the rose king of the rose king please whatever it is uh get me out of here it's not good fail please it is a travesty <laughs> okay oh it's me Got again to you. <laughs> So, yeah, as I said, I'm getting through all mine here. So this is one of the worst. This next one's one of the worst shows I've got. So everybody knows it, though. Studio A Cat has done a show called She Professed Herself Pupil of the Wise Wise Man. 
Studio ACAD has done almost nothing. Uh, they did Battle battle did in five seconds or whatever, Frame Arm Girls, Tamayomi. All these shows are not good. Uh, I've seen most of these, and they're not, they're not, not, not real good. Um, and uh, this one's not very good either, and it's very all, all over the place. So there's this VR MMORPG called Earth. They love this fucking VR MMO shit lately. Like, it's yeah. fucking everywhere. Um, so hot right now. So, so, oh my God, it's so hot. So hot. So... <laughs> And um, it's called Arch Earth Online, and there's this player that has a name and appearance similar to this, like, old wizard that's in the game. And one day he buys this appearance change item that lets him, of course, turn into, like, a little girl. (laughs) Wonderful. Yeah, of course. He couldn't be anything else. And... Yeah, I guess he the game gets like suspended or something, and I'm reading the synopsis because I don't remember any of this from the anime, and because it's just like terribly told. And he wakes up and he's still online, and he's like sucked into the game because this is how every 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 VR MMO game ever was. But he's stuck in his little girl skin instead of his wizard skin that everybody knows him as. Yes. Oh, Why no. have fan service when you can be fan service? Yeah. I think too he was like part of a guild or something that was like these legendary players Mm -hmm. and then they disappeared for 30 years and he came back it was it was weird it's very weird yeah i i I wrote like stream of thought stuff about this i literally just wrote what is this an anime in which an mmo becomes real life i've never heard of such a thing and then i just put instantly forgettable very very much so i mean the guy's like what the hell is his name even he's like so so and so the one man army because he can like there's a scene in the first episode where where he's like his normal form where he's like an old dude with a beard and he basically summons an army out of a portal to fight another army and his army just crushes them and so he's like the one man army and there's some threat that's gonna impact this like this world that they're in and uh and they're all very happy that this girl came because she says that she's not really him even though she is she claims that she's like his student because i guess she can't bring himself to admit that he turned himself into a little girl character and then like the third episode is just like they're randomly in this cave hunting this item or some shit and he's with them and is insanely op and is like summons this like this valkyrie from a portal and is like and he's just like, I want you to clear this whole dungeon down to level five. And then this Valkyrie just goes and just wipes the dungeon, basically. Like, <laughs> and they're like, Wow, I've never, I never thought it could be so easy walking through like a C class dungeon like this because like, everything's dead. Um, and then there's this scene where one of the characters is like talking to his little sister who died from some some mysterious illness, and you don't really care because you never saw her in the anime until that very moment. It's fucking terrible. Um, this is not good at all. And as Kazuo said, very forgettable. So Jeff Goldblum said it best. That is one big pile of shit. It's pretty bad. Yeah. And it's, it's sub 6.0 online and it's just not good. And yeah. Um, and next up we have Sabu, Sabikui Bisco from Kaloline. Yes. So this one is from Studio Oz. It is their first full production. So that gave me a little reason to be nervous, but I shouldn't have been because it's actually pretty good. And I'll tell you why. So uh, this show is pretty hard to to describe. It is a strange apocalyptic world with giant animals and a guy that shoots arrows that grows giant shrooms. What? So, yes, yes. yes, uh, He shoots arrows and and then giant mushrooms appear. (laughs) And uh, also Japan has been reduced to a desert and everything is turning to rust including people and uh they you like people tend to think that mushroom spores are producing this rust-based sickness but it is actually part of the cure so this um our main character uh akeboshi bisco he is uh traveling the 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 country with his master who is actually sick with this rust sickness um and he's they produce these mushrooms and they are seen as terrorists uh, but a young doctor named Milo gets wrapped up in one of their attacks and decides to embark on a journey with Bisco in order to find this legendary mushroom that can cure everyone, including Bisco's master and Milo's hot sister, whose name's Pau, and yeah, she has big boobs. Is she hot? 
She's pretty hot. Oh. I'm look so up. she falls under anime female category number two. Number two, yes. Okay, well, yes. And yeah. she's, yeah. Big titted bitches. I can't say, say that she's my favorite representation of a female character because she is like the leader of the, um, of the, pretty much the police force in this, uh, town Milo? and her police. police no 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 As we all know but about her, Caroline. No. <laughs> but but her police police milk their police it's okay her uniform it zippers up and it will go very below her cleavage like she is the leader of the police force and you can basically see all her boobs what the fuck is wrong with like, her eyes what? she have a black eye or something <laughs> are you talking at the the blue haired character yeah that's that's Milo that's the doctor Oh, I don't know about... why he has that spot in his eye, but they do call him Panda because of that. Oh, you're talking about someone different. Yeah, that's his. That's the brother, and Pawu is his sister. Pa- okay. P a w o o. Okay, interesting. These names are yeah. d- really stupid. Okay, please continue. I'm sorry. <laughs> um. Yeah. So the animation is pretty good so far. It is, to say the least, an interesting world, and um, the characters are fun enough. Honestly, based on how popular it is right now, I think it's a contender for one of the best anime of the season because a lot of people are watching it for the most part. Uh, so really, I'm surprised by um, how good it is compared, like due to the fact yeah. that it is a you know a like the first full production the studio has produced. Um, but yeah, it is pretty good so far. So they're uh, the team behind it, even though it is a new studio. Like the actual like animator and uh, yeah. director are really good. So and, and they also have this have like a script writer from Cowboy Bebop, Perfect Blue, da da da, etc. Yeah. So they have some really good talent behind it. So Oh, yes. Uh pass. <laughs> no, no. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, wait. 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 Oh, and boom goes the dynamite. I need new pass drops. I need to Make that a note. Didn't to even mention the, here. Was, was there a crab in the show? There is a giant crab in this. That's show. all you needed to have said. I'm in. Right. Crabs, as we all know, is the highest, most evolved life form in the world. They're tasty. Like, undisputably, carbs are the elite form that we should all want to be. Carbs are carbs. Crabs. Crabs. <laughs> it's like, like, carbs. Cookie, carbs. Carbs are amazing. Carbs, carbs are delicious. I'm going nuts. Crabs. Crabs. <laughs> Yeah. I will say that the first episode or two is a bit confusing because they decided to do this weird story structure where they will uh, tell you scenes out of order and in different places. So they'll start showing you what's happening in one place and then what's happening in another place like three hours later. And they'll go back to that other place where it's in the past and then they will keep like alternating back and forth. So it's kind of you do have to really pay attention for whatever reason in the first episode or two, try to figure out what's going on. It's just the way they did it, but I managed to follow along okay. All right. Well, good. I'm good. We passed another show. It's fantastic. This one, I, I, it does look the the style does look pretty unique, and it, I, I, it does look interesting. So, I think I'll enjoy it. All right. The last show for today is in the, is in the land of Lead Dale. <clears throat> Get this: a girl named Kana finds herself in the world of her favorite. VR MMORPG. Wow. Son of a bitch, I'm in. No Done. fucking way. <laughs> so, <clears throat> actually, this girl, it, and by the way, this is done by Studio Maho Film, who, who I don't even recognize. It's done only a... Good Lord. Um, 100 Man... What is this? Their, their top anime is I'm Standing on a Million a million Lives. I, 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 don't know. I remember that one. And then the other one, the other most popular show is what the fuck is the English title of this? It's for my daughter. I, if it's for my daughter, I defeat the de- the demon lord. So I haven't seen these, but so, so this... that first one you mentioned is about a virtual world as well. Yes. Oh my god. Okay. Well, in this in this anime, the girl is in like she's like in a she's like bedridden or in a coma or something, and she's in a hospital on life support, and the power in the hospital goes out, which would never happen. And the life support machine doesn't have a backup pa- ba- doesn't have a backup power source, which it always would, and so she dies when the power wow. goes out. Yeah, That's, and that sucks. Yeah, it does suck. Except before, rather than actually dying, her consciousness gets sucked into the VR MMORPG called Lead Dale, um, and sh- she just decides somehow that she's just gonna live forever in this game. I don't know, whatever. She's like this blonde girl, and, and her name is Kana, and. Honest to God, this anime really should be good, but it just meanders and is about fucking nothing. 
the whole time. She just wanders around and starts like looking for her kids. Like I guess she's like 600 years old and has had all these children that are like also in the game and they and they should be NPCs I think, but they all act like regular people. And she's literally just stumbling around looking for these different people the whole three episodes. And um you know, she learns that, as it says here, the 200 years have passed since she last interacted with the world. And so when she pops up, like the world is a little different than she remembers it. And people don't, people, some people recognize her, but they are like, holy shit, where have you been? Um, and it just does not absolutely nothing in the three episodes that it's got. And uh, it doesn't look bad. Um, Kane is like, like um, her character model is pretty nice looking. It's, she's not looted or anything. She's just like this elfish looking cute pretty girl she's like you know i like her character model like quite a lot it's just that this anime really has the makings of something that's good but it's about absolutely fucking nothing it just does nothing it goes nowhere and so i have no reason to even like really want to watch anymore because i don't really want to watch this character wander around this fake world for 12 episodes it's just not interesting it's almost like it's almost like they took a VR MMO, which should be about like leveling and fighting monsters and going on quests and all this, which is what every MMO is about. Um, but they're like, no, we're just going to make it a slice of life anime and make it just as boring as most slice of life animes are. We're just going to wander around and do nothing. So that's pretty much you, what this is. If you want to watch a show that is about a terminally ill girl that gets sucked into a VR MMO because that is literally the only joy she can get out of her life because otherwise she is basically brain dead in the real world. Go watch the Mother Rosario's arc on, from Sword Art Online because that is literally the best arc of Sword um, Art Online and it's very well done. Or go play the hentai game, Con a Little Sister. Really? Definitely. <laughs> is that part Con of it? I'm willing to bet Con a Little Sister is a lot better than this anime. You'd be oh. surprised. You'd be surprised. Um, so yeah, this one's not passing. It's pretty, it's really quite bad. So um. oh No, God! No, God, please, no! 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 All right, so we have passed four shows now from the season. We got we got My Dress Up Darling, Demon Slayer. Those were the obvious picks. Uh, Sabi Kui Bisco and The Genius Prince's Guide to Raising a, a Nation Out of Debt. And we got two more to pass, and we got one more week of impressions to go through. It, oh, Kazra over there just smiling with the knowledge that he doesn't have to review a genius prince's <laughs> guy. <to her>. Oh, <laughs> my God. I also, th oh, I also no, think, we I think should... I'm already busy that day whenever we're <laughs> supposed to review it. I also think we should consider renaming the podcast in light of all of these anime that are coming out. We should probably just like call it Four People Sit Around a podcast. Table Talking About Anime, the podcast. Just name it something very literal and long. The bald yeah, guy makes exactly. rude jokes and makes the girl with bangs cringe. <laughs> yes. And then there's Mason. <laughs> and then there's Mason. That's instead of, Colin, a, and then there's Mason. Instead of the with and my Mason. smartphone, it's it's with the Mason. <laughs> yeah. With Mason. <laughs> bald man and girl wearing a blanket brackets featuring Mason. I'm chilly. <laughs> You're chilly. Okay. All right. The podcast. You know, it's like when those old sitcoms and they're like showing you the guests and there's always that one person that's like, and this yeah. person. Featuring. Or like, and Mason, like, why do they get the call Mason. out? Yeah. I'm always the person at the end who gets like, you're like, is that a compliment? Is that yeah. not? I don't know. But that's, I always that's thought. Me. I always thought the uh, the theme song to Gillian's Island was throwing a lot of shade on, was it the <laughs> professor the professor and Marianne? Because uh, originally it was and the rest and it was just them two. Yeah, and, yeah. Like, and you're saying and the rest, just give them names. There's two there other only people two on the left. There wasn't a ton. Yeah. Anyway. And the rest. Anyway, we, so I can't believe we made it out of this alive. After, <laughs> after this next coming week, we will open up the listener choice poll, so you can pick. So you, the listener, will pick the final three anime. Um, I have no idea what it'll be. Like this, this season really is like here's these three shows that are good, a couple sequels that are good, like Attack on Titan, and then a bunch of really mediocre stuff. So. I don't know what we're going to end up watching, but, um, you know, I don't know. We can always throw Yikes. We can always throw a retro on there if you want. I, I think we it. might. I think we might. So, all right. Um, wow, we made it to the end of the show. That's our show for today. And um, I am so happy that we had Kazuo today. I mean, just one, because Kazuo is just a funny guy and had probably the line of the show with the, what was that What was that line you dropped with the, I, I actually wrote I have, it down, one-eyed beauty. I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> beauty. Yes, the line of the show. Yeah. Um, 
But you know, I yeah, you know, I miss I just miss seeing your face, and I know that people miss hearing your voice. So uh-huh. it's good to have you uh, join us today. Um, one more time, where can we find Cosmo these days? Oh well, you can find me on Twitter at Impressive Tony, which is my government name. Get after um, the second part, not the first part. That's not actually <laughs> Impressive Tony. That'd be cool though. I might change it. Uh, also, you can find me on YouTube. Look up Impressive Tony on YouTube. I have been reviewing movies on there. So help me get to my first 100 subscribers by my birthday, which is February 16th. I'd mm-hmm. really appreciate it. All right. And um, we also have uh, Mason at Macy Pacey with spell with C's. And we have the podcast, of course, is at AAA podcast. And you're going to want to check us out on Facebook, Discord, TikTok. Listen, Caroline's putting in the work. She's making, she's, she's maintaining all these pages. So you know, don't make her Making sad. Dope ass hype videos. Yeah. Please yeah. check them out. She, yeah, okay. So money. one is out already. The uh, best anime of the year nomination videos for our anime Oscars. So if you want to check that out, it is already on Twitter, Facebook, and TikTok. The best OP video was out, but I had to make some changes. It'll be out again. <laughs> yeah. In uh, the next day or two. And you so, guys need yeah, to go vote for vote for anime Oscars because I mean it's. It's still not determined, really. So you got to get in there and make your make your voice heard. If you want to help out the podcast, it's aaapodcast.com slash join. We'll give you eight extra episodes of content every month just for you. You'll help out the podcast. Make sure we still stick around. Subscribe on iTunes or wherever you listen. Uh, help us be number one. Tell a friend. Next week, Winter Impressions Round 3. And we'll see you there yeah. next week on the Anime Excellent on this podcast. Take care, guys. Peace. Yeah. Bye. Yeah.